Game number one, King Steven against Kozral. This should be a banger. And it's going to all start off on islands, which we haven't seen too much of. Here we are in our third quarterfinal. Viewer votes tell us this is doubt against the Viper. But of course, we don't know. We'll be looking for clues here. And we have King Steven going for Aztecs on islands against Kozrael's Vikings. Dave, when we saw the amount of mesosivs that were drafted by King Steven, we did question it. Never did I think that Aztecs, one of the worst water civilizations, would be picked here. I just want to remind everyone that Aztecs are one of the only civilizations, if not the only one that doesn't get Galleon in the entire game. Like a really two, bad late bad. game Navy. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Like really, really bad Malians. Malians, okay. Malian Galleons. Yeah, they don't exist. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. one of two civilizations that doesn't get it. However, they do have some very interesting bonuses, right? Their docks should work faster uh, in producing ships. They do have shipwright and they do have fast fire. It's interesting they don't have galleon, but they do have shipwright. That's fascinating to me. Yeah, that, that's, also the relics crazy. the relics generate more gold. So if you're in a late game situation and you're spamming fast fires could maybe do something. I I'm not sure, but likely this is going to be a landing from King Steven and Kozrau will know that just purely based on the civilization pick. Kozrau's going to come in here his quarterfinal. He won four one uh, against a player who was fairly standard. I would say in the first round. He will have no intel, of no information on King Steven, of course. That's the beauty of Hidden Cup. And he's just going to be like, who would pick freaking Aztecs? I would immediately be thinking either... I would immediately be thinking Yo, in all honesty. Um, and yeah, I could still see this being Yo in King Steven. But but you do know, Dave. Like, you know all the things we talked about. Uh, I, it would actually shock me if most of the pros know that uh, Aztecs actually get ship right. Because I, I didn't know that. So, um... You got to expect a landing. So if you're going to expect a landing, what do you do? What are the small things, the important things that so many pros tend to lack, Dave, if you're expecting a landing? So if you're expecting a landing, number one, get Loom before you go up because you never know when they're going to be at your island. It also gives you an opportunity to gather a bit of extra food, right? Obviously, you're going to be down a villager. A lot of people yep. will go up with no Loom on islands because they feel like they're secure. You're not going to be secure against Aztecs. Um, mm -hmm. number two is you have to build either outposts or random houses on different parts of your island. And number three is keep that scout active at all times and start thinking about where the transport ship can approach from. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, those are all good points. Now, the tricky thing here is you're assuming a landing. But the timing on the landing could still be something that King Stephen works on here. You could still go for a Navy opening. Just because your Navy's not the strongest long-term doesn't mean you have to skip it entirely. For those that have really watched every game, I encourage you to go back and watch Jan Zizka versus Alfred the Alpaca on Islands. And that was a Bengali versus Italian war. <clears throat> so that was a bit more mm -hmm. common. But basically what uh, Jan Zizka did there was he went for a passive opening into some water control, then into the landing come castleage. And I think that's actually where the Aztecs will thrive, is if they can have villagers on the opponent's island in castleage, you're going to have the potential for the strong monks, the eagles. I'm not sure it needs to be a feudal age landing is kind of my point here. Well, their docks produce faster and they have fire, they have fire galley. The Vikings don't. Oh, so that is, Steven. that is... That is so That's tragic. Doubt confirmed. Oh my god. That is doubt confirmed. King Steven shoots the boar with his TC and uh, disastrous there. You you don't have much food and he just I mean there's nothing happening right now and for something that players are so good at doing, Dave. Like every pro seems to be weakening the boar with the TC, finishing off with the villagers. That is the risk there and I hate to say it but now confirmed because there is one player who is known for struggling at that a little bit more than others. Bro, oh, it's man. islands. What yeah. else are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh god, that's a disaster. A brutal well, start. the 
the plan has changed, right? Uh, everyone has a plan until they shoot their boar too many times at the town center. And then everything needs to be adapted. Steven will not have the food that he needs. And there's a second dog for Steven and might go into that water contest early. This might catch Cosro off guard. Honestly, if they think yep. it's just going to be a YOLO landing, this could really catch them off guard. You see that scout patrolling the island from Cosro already trying to look for those early landings from Steven. Yeah, so Cosro looking around is going to add a second dock as well. The Vikings cannot make fire galleys, so they are exposed in, uh, or they are vulnerable rather, in early feudal. Speaking of uh, problems in early feudal, uh, there's no house for King Steven right now. And he might be, oh, he just built one somewhere else. Never mind. False alarm. Sorry, I lost a little bit of faith in our king after the whole boar situation, but... There we go. He's going to go for galleys himself here, Dave. So that's interesting. You did mention that the, the military bonus where you produce a bit faster could be helpful here. But Vikings versus Aztecs galley war. I'm definitely going to lean towards the Vikings. And based on some of the micro I've seen from both these players, coming into this, I felt like Kazro is going to be the player who would prefer those types of engagements too. Yeah. Well, King Steven is just going to have to kind of tread water here. Because not only has he lost the boar, he has a disadvantage uh, with the cost of his navy. And he also mm -hmm. has a disadvantage in the fact that Cosro already has wheelbarrow on his eco. Yep. So while he does carry more resources with his villagers, the speed of the bills helps Cosro a little bit more. And over time, this is just going to scale a lot better for Cosro. Yeah, there goes the patrol from King Stephen. Sees the house. And you see Kazra was going forward. <clears throat> He's going to relocate his fish because he got that attack signal. And back he comes to deal with King Steven. A really uh, sloppy grouping here for Kazra. He's got to be careful. Nice job from King Steven to get the early lead here with the galley war. Won't be able to kill fishing ships, though. It is four now for Kazra. And again, I expect a lot more of this. But we do have very early fletching for King Steven. I mean, if he didn't lose that boar underneath the TC... If we if we knew that if we didn't know, sorry, that he didn't have as much food, I'd really be thinking his start was maybe a little bit sharper than Cosrow's. Imagine, okay, Tristan, imagine yourself in 2015, right? <clears throat> oh okay. God, bring yourself back, right? Okay, okay. I know it's yep. weird. You're underneath the little blanket that you used to stream under, um, yep. in your yep. attic. <clears throat> yep. We're watching a one v one islands game. And someone has picked Aztecs to go water. Uh-huh. What do you say? Dude, I wouldn't even know enough about the game. I'd be like, they have fast fire ship that's really good. <laughs> okay, I'd be like, maybe wow, 2017. Fast amazing. <laughs> Let's skip ahead a couple of years. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. 2017. Um I I would say what would I say? I'd probably say um a lot more. Uh I'd probably be speaking at the wrong end of the mic. But beyond all that, I'd be saying that you have an opportunity if you could make it messy. I mean, I would hope that that's what I would say. And right now, it's it's looking like King Stephen's in a position to maybe kill Kosrow's fish. Kosrow just killed the fish from King Stephen. But I also might be saying, again, if 2017 me knew enough, that maybe the Aztecs was like kind of a throwaway pick on the draft. But then again, Dave, yeah. it's like, it was a second pick. It wasn't throwaway yeah. at all. Aztecs was the second pick. This is a, a really important strategy, and we've got a transport being made by King Steven. And I don't know what 2017 me would have said, but 2017 me would have been very excited for this landing. And uh, 2017 you would have gone straight to that middle island. <laughs> no, that's 20, no, that's 2015 me. That's 2015. We've oh, got to go back okay. now. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> Uh, no, I think actually I would say, why is this not a Vikings war? Because that's all Islands was back then. We didn't have as many sieves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Loom's it's, on the way for King It's funny to Steven. me, though. Like, this is, it's fascinating how well he's keeping up on water. Steven's doing a really, really solid job, right? I mean, there's yep. still four fishing ships alive for Cosro, but he's forced Cosro into this full-on water investment. However, look at the resources. is about to click up. Steven is making eagles. So he's further delaying himself from going. Oh, he is on the way to cast. I'm blind. I'm blind, Tristan. It's early. Never it's, mind. It's all he's good. Up. 
It's all good. It, 2015, I was wondering you about been that. looking at the corner, looking yeah. for birds. So it, that's probably Makes what sense. you were doing. We're just we're just trying to take it back here a little bit. Um, so Eagle comes across. I do find it interesting. He's making eagles from his starting island, and he's willing to ferry them across. Kazar doesn't have a scout there. Now he did have a scout there moments ago, from what I noticed. But this is the type of position you want is just to be able to build up buildings without them noticing. And I think right now Kazra might have some suspicion, but he has to actually confirm that. And he's going to look and he's going to see this, Dave. What a great job from Kazra. Now, what Kapoch did when MBL landed him in the qualifiers is he sent the Vils forward to attack with Vikings. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility here for Kazra? Because he will have handcart. And he can kind of hunt yeah. these villagers down and just stop this landing in its tracks before the siege or the monks get up. I think that would be a really solid play for him. The little scary once the barracks completes. He did kill the first eagle, though, so it would just be one eagle. I love this from King Steven. King Steven's going to find some vil picks. King Steven lost his fishing ships a long time ago. This is the type of thing that Khazra's going to find value with. Nice job from him. He kills one of the two villagers. You cannot lose this villager if you're King Steven. This villager is a very important part of the push. Villager should survive for now. But Kozrel has one fishing ship. He's going to have to make more now, Dave. He wanted to, to have the water dominance and make more fish. Mm -hmm. Okay, King Steven needs to wall. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, King Steven walling in the monastery. Keeps the villager protected. And, and this is no joke, man. Eagles... And now monks, especially when you can get that relic right next to the monastery. This could actually do something here for King Steven. Yeah, he's losing all of his water units, though. So unless yeah. he texts into War Galley and starts going into those fire ships to snipe the fish, Cosmo has a huge opportunity here to just fish boom behind this. And then he doesn't have to have any villagers on farms. And he can focus all of his attention just simply on pushing this stuff back. But like you said, you don't want to get those Aztec monks rolling, oh. but he's brought a galley around. Will he be able to snipe this vill? Great delete there by Steven to save this villager. So important until he converts another one to keep this villager alive. I mean, if the galleys come from the other way as well, this villager could die. I also think in, in again, just now we're thinking old islands, Dave. I wouldn't mind uh -oh. a transport ship from Khazral to send knights over to King Steven's side. I know right now uh -oh. he wants to focus on this. Oh, God. Oh, Monk goes down. Oh, no. Another villager is exposed. And oh, no. King Steven. Disaster. It's a denied monastery. The villager is dead. The monks are dead. He doesn't have the relic. And this has been a very lackluster start so far. Uh, for King Steven, as Khazrao just soaked up that pressure. He'll drop the TCs. Now, he'll know that this push likely can't really snowball against him. And yeah. Dave immediately added the transport. Like, this Khazrao guy, he won on islands in the first round. Uh, and now he... I know it was maybe lacking at times from King Steven, but he defended from this and made it look easy. And no hesitation to get a transport to the other side. This is someone who's been playing this game a long time who probably picked islands a lot in the past in tournaments. And Steven, I mean, he's cooking, but he kind of burnt the food on this one. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. He kind of burnt the food with the Aztecs. We'll see what the reboom can bring. We're going to have three yeah. town center boom with the Vikings, with wheelbarrow and handcart, and even heavy plow already. So planning for the later stages of the game. Right? On I islands just, where you want to save as much wood as possible. It's looking great for Cosrow. I just got, I gotta love how easy it is to spot doubt. Like, like the monks not getting conversions because he leaves them exposed. There he gets oh. a conversion. The villager quick wall's not happening. King Steven has, has had a lot of doubt tendencies, but the eagles are out. The knight's running around. That's good stuff. It, it, you still need to make sure these buildings are as much of a threat as possible. And that's what he's doing right now. Their quick walls I mean, fail from Khazrao. Yeah, it's going to take a villager, probably take another one too. The galleys are still harassing the wood line a little bit. And yep. some of the galleys are trying to be converted. These buildings are not dead yet. So Khazrao can't ignore this. All it takes yeah. is one villager being converted. And then suddenly he's got that forward base again. Great house walls there too. Yeah, very last minute house walls there from Khazrao. Could have done it a bit earlier, but had the speed to, to try and bait Steven in there and trap him, maybe. Viking Knights are not very strong. 
but Knights are still strong against Eagles without many upgrades. But I agree. I, it, it, like, there's still monks coming out. There's a relic in that monastery. He's going three TCs. We talked about how fast fire is available for the Aztecs later. I, it looked bad for Steven, but now I think it's looking like he's got a much better chance than I thought he had a moment ago. Okay, host ball fails, but he's going to save the monk. Will he save this monk is the question. Both of them get into the town center and he's fine. However, like... All of this annoyance is happening from two burning buildings that should have been dead by now. And yeah. that's the danger of getting this this position with the Aztecs. This is clearly why Steven picked this civilization and more monks, more eagles are coming. So Kozrao has to wait for that light cap upgrade. Behind this, he is adding in more fish. And he does have some on stone and he does have a transport and he's wisely sending the knights now over to the enemy island. Remember, we saw a monastery there earlier from Steven, so he might be able to convert those. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and and I think the initially Kazra thought he could get the knights here before this monastery would be up, but he wasn't expecting this level of pressure. So now he has decisions to make. Lightcap come in to snipe the monks. Kazra loses a monk, but he's into the TC and he's going to kill one. He's going to kill two. He's going to kill three, and I think he's going to kill four monks here from King Steven with these Lightcap. Looks like he didn't see that one, Dave. But okay, tell me, what do you do if you're Khazra? You have full water control. Can you justify dropping a castle on the opponent's island here? No, I think you have to drop it defensively and just get him off okay. your island. Once you get okay. him off your island, you're Vikings against Aztecs on a water map. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, the only concern should be getting this guy away from your island. That's a great galley in the back there from Khazra, just using his water control with limited units to scout the new docks from King Steven. Is King Steven still just trying to convert new vills to make more buildings forward? Cosbrow still respecting this and just roaming around with the knights and getting devotion too. Yeah, I mean, no knights here. That You're going to potentially have some problems against the eagles. They continue to produce. Monks continue to go down on both sides. But now King Steven is going to shift into some fires here. Khazra's eco balance is not what he would have wanted it to be. Having 1,200 stone is a sign to me that he really felt like he was going to clear this up. He'd have two castles. He'd be imping, making navy. But I will say the positive for Khazra is he, it's that right side of his little island isn't that important for resources. Yeah. There was one relic there, but it's not like he has like stone or, or gold there. It's really just wood. Well, I mean, not that important on islands, right? Wood is... <laughs> Long-term, wood is a big issue. Oh my goodness, great house falls there to trap him in. It really felt like Khazar, like you said, thought this landing would be cleared up earlier, didn't want to go for yep. that castle, and then was forced into a weird one on the wood line there. But that castle is going to make sure that everything gets cleared up on this side. Let's see, the knights are devoted. He does get only one conversion, and he might get a second one here. Yeah, so I think that night rush will be cleared up. That night might come over to this side now. I like what Khazra's doing now. Now that he built that castle, he doesn't have to worry about the front of his base. He's trying to take out the buildings, and he's started to produce more navy now. If there's one thing I learned about the longboats in Hidden Cup 5, it's that they melt buildings way faster than I ever remember them doing. Yeah. So I'm thinking, like, you've got to get some fire ship counts you have to get some fire ships out right away here if you're King Steven. You cannot wait for Imp. Waiting for Imp would be a big mistake. I mean, Kozbro is also, like, he's 4TC booming behind this yeah. on islands, right? You got the, the Berserks coming out now. At what point do you just kind of stall out the villager production and switch fully onto Navy or try and go up to Imp yourself? Because there is now a risk on water of being pushed back here if your Aztec opponent is going up to imp faster than you. They do get chip rate, dry dock, they get fast fire. Could be an issue if you don't have the mass. I think, yeah, I, I mean, the answer is you do it now. When you see those fires, I mean, Khazra really being annoyed by these eagles here. But I think at this point, now that you see the fires, you have to think about the Imperial Age right away. Maybe needs to use the market to balance it out. And here comes some more knights, which is not something King Steven is prepped to deal with. I just can't help but look at that stone for Khazra. This guy has 1,800 stone, and he built a castle. <laughs> he could build three more. It's like he's yep. saving stone for the next game or something. That's pretty insane. 
Also, make sure those Aztec monks don't get to the Middle Islands, right? If you give him four additional relics with Aztecs, yep. even in the long game against Vikings, that's a really solid shot to win with the extra reason. Is that the MTC? There's no way that was the MTC on the right side of Steven's base. That's crazy. I think... The one that was being attacked by the ships. <laughs> no way, dude. It is the MTC. It's also very weak, and King Steven doesn't the realize The Navy's coming the back, MTC. too. Like the Navy's I think coming there's back a couple, that way, There's a couple fires, though. There's a couple fires which should delay. He now has fires on the front. Khazra will be too distracted. Dude, this... this it reminds me of when we casted Otto yesterday. This is immediately so doubt for King Steven. Mm -hmm. It's not even funny. <laughs> well, longboats are being added now. He's only 45 seconds away from Imperial Age. And there we go. There's one of the castles immediately across the pond from the other castle from King Steven. But it feels like Khosra will have control over both of these islands. And... Longboats, if you get all the technologies in, are still superior to fast fire. Fast fire, the only advantage with them is that they're a little bit easier to micro. And yeah. you get that instant upgrade, basically, with, with a cheap um, technology, Ooh, relatively. Man, but this is a great moment for King Steven. Look at all the ships Jeez. he's killing. He also now knows that his opponent has a castle there. And so while he has to back away, I think he can actually make a trebuchet and range Khosrau's castle from his shoreline. So if he does that, and then he hits with fast fire here before any of the upgrades come in for Khosrau, I really think King Steven has an opportunity here. He's Aztecs with relics. He's chasing down ships. This becomes a big water war. Now, those monks can't make it home to, to drop off the relics. There's, there's a chance here, Dave. Elite longboat instantly upon reaching imperial age love to see it we are also seeing the war galley tech come in for demolition ships because it upgrades mm -hmm. them as well and we yep. got demos in the queue still two thousand gold or sorry stone for cosra he's just waiting for his castle placements being very very patient here or maybe hesitant is yeah. it hesitant or is it patient i, I guess it I think depends it's, I think on your it's perspective patience. right yeah, yeah, I think I think it's patience. Uh, he doesn't really gain much from building more castles right now, so he wants to make sure he waits for the right time. Now, again, it's been it's been scrappy, but Khosrau has always made sure that when King Stephen has an advantage, he's transporting something else over here. Here come the demos. These are not heavy demos yet. Khosrau just running in underneath his castle with these demos. Heavy demo will be in in 15 seconds, and honestly, it looks pretty messy right now from Khosrau as he's forced to use some of that stone to repair this castle, which, like we said, was a little too close to the shoreline there. Yeah, this is such a great position here for Khosrau. If he gets a couple trebs behind this, I think you take out the docks first, and yep. then you go for the castle. Um so that Steven has to replace the dock somewhere else. He's still diving in for these traps. He's going to get him with the longboats, which is so annoying for Steven because it feels like Cosmo isn't even respecting your fire ships. Yeah, seriously, dude. And he got heated shot really early here, Cosmo. Yet again, though, he does wedge himself in here in an interesting position. He doesn't back away towards the demos. I'm not sure this is good for Cosmo, in all honesty, but he may feel like it's worth it in some way because of his castle. That, that, that seems... Very that wasteful not to good. me. Yeah. Yeah. He, he is focusing, though, like, on transporting bills, which I think we all know is annoying. And King Steven wants those relics. If he has any chance, he needs to make sure he has the relics with Aztecs. And he is going to use this time. He is going to hop into that transport. And the heist is on. That was a great snag there from Steven. Also, <laughs> we have to point out... As Khosra now comes over looking for those relics, they're not there anymore. Sorry, brother. <laughs> we have to point out that during that fight with the with the fires where he lost all the longboats there, he didn't have chemistry. He didn't even have bracer. So he went Ooh. elite longboat first as we see the transport oh, go man. down, not before the villagers hop out. Those villagers, that could have been that could have been rough for them. So we've had some interesting moments here with the transports, but again. We have the longboats coming in. Now the upgrades you mentioned be uh, before are in. And now the trebs go down. So honestly, maybe this castle for Khosrau, even though he's invested a lot of his stone, I think it's paid off, dude. Like, he's killed so mm -hmm. many ships here, so many trebs here. And he just felt like, if I can get Vikings, if I can get longboats, 
If I can have the demos, Aztecs can't beat me on water. I have to make, I have to ensure the Aztecs are not on my island, which is no longer the case. And unfortunately for King Steven, it feels like for his game plan to work, he needed all the things we just mentioned. He needed to have the landing do more. Aztecs are just not very good on water at this stage. Yeah, now you got Cannon Galleon from Cosrow. And the only yep. thing to really counter Cannon Galleon if there's longboats to protect is maybe like monks, but that feels bad, right? Shipwright coming in here from King Steven. And now we have Elite Berserk from <laughs> Cosrow. Cosrow's Ka gaming right now. Cosrow's like, okay. I, I have the resources for this. Why not at this point? Elite Berserk going into the eco of King Steven would finish him off. King Steven's game plan has fallen apart, but this is still the first game in what will hopefully be a long quarterfinal. This is still something he trained for, you know, for a long time. And so he doesn't want to call it just yet. He wants to ensure his opponent finishes him off. We've seen crazy comebacks on islands in the past. But with the redocking happening, he is going to get shipped right now. So that's something. But his castle's going to be down, and I think we might just be moments away from the GG call if Khosrow continues to take down these docks. I think there's thousands of people here that are learning for the first time that Aztecs get Shipwright and Dry Dock. Dude, I'm <laughs> one of them. Because, like, yeah, and look at how many docks there are. With that Aztec production speed, these fast fires, if he has the resources, he's going to have a huge army really soon. Like, really, yeah. really quickly. The, the problem is, if it's just fast fires... Your opponent only needs a couple demos <laughs> and yeah. the fast fires just go poof, right? And the demos are waiting right behind the cannon galleons. Like, Kazura's aware of this. If you're going to come in with fires, that's your only option. I'm prepared. So we might see a big explosion. I mean, King Steven figures it's now or never. I have to try. He's trying to bank things up. I think the longboats Steven are taking is out. Gonna... <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's going to load in those traps and try for a landing. At the same time, he's mm. pushing out with the fires. So he's yep. going to go to the left side, ignore all of this stuff through the middle, not try and push that at all, and then maybe land on the side of that middle island, take out the castle immediately, and yeah. try and get a presence there? Or does he land on the island from Khosrow? I mean, at this point, it's all desperation, right? Yeah, I mean, a couple trebs just went down there for King Steven as well underneath his castle. Like, Khosrow genuinely sees everything. Khosrow's waiting. Like, he knows that something crazy is going to happen. That's not it. That amount of fires is not going to do anything. But this might be it. Here we go. The demos were waiting, though. And the patience from Khosrow has him prepared. And like we this said, bye, bye, fires. There's no world in which YOLO fire ships is going to work against heavy demo and elite longboats. And, uh, well, we've got a castle now from Khosrow being built on King Stephen's Island. And this is the, the victory that Khosrow really would have wanted to start off the series. This is the type of islands game he would have wanted. Beautiful play, honestly, as King Steven fights uh, on more. I mean, Khosrow is floating so many resources right now, and <laughs> he's going to double him up on score. Like, he's about yeah. to double him up on score. That is just <laughs> crazy, bro. And Steven fights on. The castle crumbles. The longboats now control basically the entire island and he's gonna try for one last fight here let's see if he can get something done with these fast fires i mean there is a point where even if you clear those ships up there your opponent just kills you with berserks right <laughs> and you think he realized that took a decent fight on water finally but kazral was able to get the job done it was some interesting strategy here from king steven he tried to go for something that nobody expected but kazral I think with the nature of knowing your opponent's civilization once you get into the game, he knew what to expect. He defended from the yep. attacks. He had a beautiful eco this game and played the type of game he would have wanted in that matchup. But that, this excites me for more, right? Because clearly, we said it on the draft, King Steven wants to play a style today that is very specific. All of his sip picks rely on his plan working out. I think we're going to see Kazra on the other hand. He, he's going to have, he's going to be more flexible. He's going to have more flow and what he can counter and what his forms of aggression are. And yeah, we'll find out. Let's hop into game number two, see what King Steven chooses to go for. And we were wondering, the answer is goths for King Steven, which he did in his very first round. Now, 
it wasn't just goths. It wasn't the Huskarls later. It wasn't all that. It was the early game. Look for King Steven to send a villager forward. We've seen it from him before. Yeah, and I think Khosra will be looking at this civilization and knowing that something like that is bound to happen. So he's going to need to scout with his livestock early, but then get them back to safety pretty quick because that villager is coming, the scout is coming across, and he also needs to find these rhinos and bring them in as fast as possible. It's interesting to me that Khosra is scouting the back of his base instead of the mm -hmm. front first, but he has found both of the, those rhinos. So he can take yeah. them in. It's very likely he might be looking for a wood line, for a dock spot. You know, you might not want any of those villagers to be forward. The rhinos are always on the back. So the lames we've seen okay. from goths, that is going to be uh, a bit more difficult than people might think. The, the rhinos are on the back because we thought laming would be really strong otherwise. But already, Dave, we see Kozrout bringing in the rhino earlier than he would have to. Scouting on the front, and King Steven is walking forward with a vill. Uh, just a reminder, Khazra wouldn't have been able to have seen the first round, right? This is still a hidden aspect, so uh, he doesn't know the preferences of his opponent. So there's a lot more guessing, but I think in some ways players should just assume goths means some crazy shenanigans. Mm -hmm. it's the villager is late, though. Like, like the vill is going... Is that the vill in the north there? I think it's very like, possible. Making the journey? I think the villager has gone the other way. Oh, it's oh, a goat. That's the, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, like what is she there? doing? <laughs> the I mean, not it doesn't forward. look like just now. Yeah, yeah. The the vill's coming forward just now. He wanted the initially. We saw villagers running out, and they were just going to wood. So King Stephen has got scouting intel, but it doesn't look like King Stephen is going to be able to go for uh, the lame on the rhino. But Dave. Let's not forget, King Steven didn't really accomplish a ton with laming. That was actually, um, it was it was Gregory the Seventh who accomplished mm -hmm. a lot with the same strat and laming. What King Steven did was build a barracks and build a barracks in a really awkward position for the opponent and spammed man at arms. So I think the delayed villager means better economy, and then the potential for a forward barracks. I think it's really fascinating here that Kazro got loom at 12 population true like he waited didn't see that there was any lames going on and then he gets yep. loom at 12 pop when he's not house Ooh. so he yeah. he like anticipates the timing of this maybe he's played up against the same strategy from one of his yep. practice partners but yep. he knows at what point king steven is going to come forward and he's ready for it yeah i like how king steven i know the barracks would have been exciting for people but if you think Khosrow is a quick waller, which we just saw there, uh, and if you've played and, or seen enough of this map, you cannot skip fish. Um, Otto the Great did that, never ended up well for him, and both the times he tried it. And so we have a dock on the backside for King Steven. So thus far, he's actually playing this somewhat standard, but there is the forward vill, uh, and <laughs> there is the potential of this to be not so standard. <laughs> Khosrow's like... Thank you. Additional layer of protection. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> this wall is doing like, nothing yet. It does. It really like you got to wall the whole thing and, and the trees are going to be gone at, at some point. I don't think this does anything, but it is. It is maybe making Khosrow think, does this do anything? Okay. I mean, maybe those villagers will run out of trees eventually. I mean, I mean you you don't have a lumber camp on the main island, right? So you're going to yeah. have to place yeah. another one somewhere else, and you're denying, what, 400 wood of value from that lumber camp, maybe, Ooh. by doing that? And we see a lot of cows now coming in for Cosbro, who's done some great exploration with his scout on that main area. Steven has been over here with the scout the entire time. What in the world? Kosra's getting all the Look cows right now, dude. He's even got a cow up there. I mean, that's it's good knowledge on the map. And it, it reminds me of where King Stephen set up the barracks before. King Stephen built the barracks between uh -oh. the, the mainland and between the TC. So he wants a barracks right around there. He's brought his scout over. He's bringing his vill around. And Khosrow is very much aware the scout is there. These these cows are being microed right now. Amazing cow micro from Khosrow. And Khosrow is, is ensuring that he doesn't lose these because he doesn't want King Steven to have them. 
Now the scout Dude, is not it's... weak for Cosrell, so th this should be fine for Cosrell to chase King Stephen away. Yeah, some really great movement with the cows over here. As Stephen <laughs> finds the cow, he's gonna snipe it, and Cosrell is gonna be right on the tail of that scout from King Stephen. However, there is a barracks here from Stephen, mm -hmm. and Stephen is up to the feudal age, twenty seconds faster than Cosrell. So men at arms will be around his base the only question is what's the follow-up right a lot of times you want an archer range but you're going to need that wood for ships you're going to need that wood for a mill potentially on the mainland i don't know if he has the economy to do all the things he well, wants to do here. are the cows going to be found by a militia if only the scout was still alive i think maybe the villager sorry the villagers on the right and she this is the same thing Keevan, uh, king stephen did before keevan <laughs> Uh, is build the barracks there so now you kind of get natural vision and you have a natural cutoff to stop the huh? opponent. Look at the quick walls here from Kozrael. He had to move to this side of the lumber camp because of the lack of wood from the walls. And he yeah. ends up leaving the wood line entirely. Yeah, and just kind of dekes around that house, right? He knew the palisade wall would go down because it's got yeah. some men at arms, but he bought himself enough time to get away. Hey. Steven can't find any value there in that lumber camp was basically expended already all of its value because of the walls there from steven earlier so it's an archer range here for Cosrow. steven has one fire galley three men at arms that can't really find any value and that's about it at the moment it's actually wood right now that's the big issue for Cosrow. we're docked from steven for him though. he's malians Ooh, that's a good point dave forward dock from steven he just wants to kill yep. the fish basically the idea is the man at arms are such a threat the opponent has to respect it and then you when they think you're coming hot on land you actually go and you try and beat them on the water it's a really nice thinking here yeah cracked earth terrain the house is there versus god oh, man at arms yeah yeah he could actually get some pretty good value against these houses and and force out a lot of a annoying you know, idle time from Cosbrow, but trying to go for the archer there. The TC is actually firing, loses him at at arms. Ooh. Palisade wall went down very quickly there. We do have a fire ship battle on this side. That could actually be if King Steven can get one more spark onto that fire. Don't tell me. No, that, that could have so easily been a kill. But it's, there's still the other doc there. I do have to say, Kozrow's cows, as much as we like, kind of laughed about it because it's a silly thing, what a big find for him. Because normally your villagers have to go find other resources. But he's just been able to sit underneath his TC. He hasn't had to run into the man-at-arms at all. And King Steven doesn't have any additional food income. Yeah, and that fire is holding out the archers. So the fire warned him that the archers were on the way from Kozrow. Yeah. And now Kozrao yep. is going for a watchtower here as the men at arms try and get in there. But the villager needs to leave. She can't try and complete that tower. Might go for another tower on the back end of that wood line, which could be annoying. I don't think it's really going to be that bad for Kozrao, though, because now uh, archers are here. He's going to go up to Castle Age, and he's going to be feeling really, really comfortable. To go Castle Age after all this is is insane. And again, it's the cows, it dude. comes back the to cows. the cows. Yeah. It's just so much food that he found, whereas King Stephen was using his scout for other things. Now, this is pretty much what King Stephen did before. He went up to six man at arms. He, he ended up making it messy and going into a tower. But what he didn't have was his opponent counterattacking with archers. And I have a feeling this is going to get really bad for King Stephen here because he cannot build a defensive tower anymore, Dave. Oh, boy. And there's his evacuation. And oh, boy, this is going to be rough for the king. Fletching is in too. Fletching is he could afford Fletching, he can afford Castle Age. And he didn't overcommit on the archers. He he was like, okay, three archers is enough. I'll put the rest yep. of my gold into repairing my ships, making more ships, going up to the Castle Age. And this is devastating for Steven. Like, what does he have here? It just has villagers. He has to Vill War archers now from a player that you know is gonna micro you down. It's it's so painful. It's it's, it's painful and it just how how does did Kozrael do this? Obviously, we know that Kozrael used the cows, but how did he make this look so easy? He defended from each man at arm attack. He didn't give it a lot of respect. He didn't give the villager a lot of respect. <laughs> oh. Okay, trap from King Steven. Viper confirmed. Well, no, there's no 
gate on the other side. But but still, Cosro is going to be up block? in 50 seconds. Cal block. Oh, no. Cosro is losing his fish, and he is probably running out of cows now. We we should mention that. Um, so you know, tower that tower also doesn't range any of the villagers. But will eventually. <laughs> That's such a sad tower. <laughs> <laughs> It's, so it's a shame well, because King Steven's strategy has so much potential, but certain things have just gone wrong here. <laughs> Dude, we know that this player does not play with the range uh, indicator if they uh -huh. place their tower there. Yeah. I mean, I do think it ranges a couple of those trees, but I can't imagine being King Steven right now. You, you wanted to try something different on islands. That didn't work out. Now you've gone for the strat that like you probably practice the most leading up to this tournament right he won with this before this is a new map king steven is clearly a player who likes to prepare and so you might be feeling a little dejected at the moment if, yeah. if both of your like prep strategies just haven't been able to get the job done i also know that we are definitely not seeing tato from either of these players because we have mm, not okay there's plenty of land armies hanging out near the water hanging out near these crossings and we haven't yep. seen either player try and bait the other into a demo and yeah there's true. some very clear baits that could be happening right here neither one has even made a demo so i'm I automatically agree. eliminating tato from my mind here res collected is actually quite nice for king steven uh king steven's had fish killed most of the fish from Cosrel. the key here though is king steven has to get to castle age and if goths can boom if we can get to you know two or three town centers lots of bills pumping Goths can beat anybody, and I think it could be really good against the Malians because, again, they can be good against everyone. Can, can we talk Bro, about Kozrao's need... eco balance right now? Yeah. Two on food, twelve hundred gold, and then six hundred seventy-five stone. <laughs> it's fine. He's about to have a fantastic eco once this market goes up. It's gonna look yeah, true. just just forget about where we are right now and think about where we're gonna be. There we are. <laughs> oh, buys the food for Bosa. <laughs> nice, great. And he has enough for a castle now. Where is it gonna go? He places the TC first. Yeah. Mm, I, I would like to see the castle go. I mean, the other thing is too, is Kazra was able to micro with these three crossbows. These three crossbows have done so much. Uh, he really, he's gonna grab another cow there too. I, I would like to see uh, the castle just go at home on the crack terrain just defend that area oh god oh god or if you think you're this far ahead you can go forward against a player who might be known for places there's no risk castles. Here, dude. There, there's like barely any risk from steven unless you send less than like eight vills forward for this castle i yeah. don't know how many villagers yeah. he's got coming for it but i mean this is against a player that's in feudal without even fletching yet you can tell his upgrades because yep. you've been fighting those skirms and yep. there's no risk whatsoever there's no way steven can deny this and it's and also i think that will be in range of the town center for king steven it, it will mean gabetto oh man king steven can't even see it this is actually cause showing everybody how the forward castle should be done that's impressive and it looks like I mean, King Steven put up a big fight in the previous game, but you start to lose Vils to that castle. You've had crossbows picking you apart. Still only You're one You're going to lose two. access to all your gold there. Like, this is how confident Cosro is in this castle. He has one on food right now. Okay, now he's got four. Big. Yep, yep. Okay. He does see the castle. That TC for King Steven's going to go down. He's going to need another one. He might need to evacuate way earlier than he was planning, dude. He's going for the mass evacuation. You got to get out of here quickly. Everyone needs to meet up at that TC. There he goes. There goes King Steven running with 20 villagers. I mean, I guess if you're running with 20, the majority are going to survive. But still, there's a knight waiting. And behind this cause, Steven row, is leaving, dude. He's he's Steven's literally leaving. evacuating. He's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, I mean. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. That's not the fight uh, you want to be taking here against this knight. And the knight gets pulled away. Of course it does. And we've got Gabetto now, which are like the goth killer here. I mean, it is wild to me. Kazra's eco isn't that great. Like 44 villagers versus 43. But he's found some extra cows. He's transitioning towards town centers. 
The efficiency is going to be there for him. The positioning's there. It should be great for him. But it's not like he's got this 20 villager lead right now. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know what TC's... to say, man. I don't know how Steven comes back in this. I don't think it's yeah, possible. Yeah. Well, monks could be really good against Gabetto and against knights. But you need gold for that. And right now, he's going to have no gold access. He, you have four tiles of gold where you start. He took two tiles, and then Khosrow castled the other two. So, yeah, I think you just... You play on until your opponent kills you here. Because there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a chance that maybe your opponent is all in or something. But Khosrow is in the driver's seat. I agree. Yeah, and Khosrow is finally getting his eco situation sorted, right? The relics are even coming in at this stage. Uh, we've got horse collar now in, so some farms will be added. The water, there's potential there to add more fish as the Gabetto finally clear up those few stone miners left in the yeah. main base. But I think if Cosro just focuses on land eco, doesn't even pay attention to water whatsoever, he's going to be in a really, really solid position. Okay, so... Oh, he's found the gold too. Oh, God. I mean, Cosro's just everywhere right now. As this gets worse and worse for, for King Steven, are you more certain of King Steven's identity or less after these first two games? I'm believing in Steven here. And I'm believing, believing that in Steven. Dope. Okay. Yeah. And then I, I, I'm in agreement. I think that there have been many, 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 many doubt things about this, just like the first series. What about Khosrow? Khosrow, I think 50% of the community thought it was Viper. But also, like, 40% of the community thought another guy was Viper. So, according to those votes, we have two Vipers. But has this been more or less Viper for you uh, compared to the first series? I'm still thinking it might be Viper. There's nothing that has indicated it. Now, you have to remember, if you're saying, like, Viper wouldn't make all these mistakes and stuff, he plays up to his opponents, right? And if he feels like... He's in a winning position. A lot of the times he's not playing at 100%. Yeah. He's yeah. just doing enough, right? And you can see, yeah. look, he's having fun with like, <laughs> like, look at this. Like, and now Steven's going to be like, okay, I can do this too. <laughs> hey, don't bring another, don't bring more units in, guys. That's cheating. Hey, King Steven wins. I'm pretty sure that's an admin win for King Steven. King Steven wins the game. Scores 1-1. One, one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean. it's a It's a tiny uh, victory for him. Yeah, I um, I, I feels a little more Viper. The the getting high value from the um, from from individual units, which he's been micring a lot. The uh, Viper is is pretty happy. He feels like he can get the Castle Age to squeeze in the early castle or get a couple knights out, like he did here. That was adaptive play. You can't plan on getting those cows. It felt very adaptive. It felt very on the fly. And there as well, you know, the style with the micro like we saw before. But we'll see. I mean, we might see things that change our mind, unfortunately, for King Steven. He doesn't want to call it, guys. He doesn't want to accept that he's down two games. Especially because I felt like this Goth's plan was one of his biggest strats for the tourney. But um, it was the cows, dude. Like, I wonder if in the semis tomorrow, the first thing we talk about is... Our players going out and finding the additional cows. King Steven had no yeah. food underneath the TC, and Khosrow had a thousand food underneath his TC. It feels like the the cows are really important to find. I mean, yeah, but most people are gonna send their scout out there, so you can only get like three or four. Khosrow yeah. got yeah. what eight or something yep. ridiculous because Steven was just hanging around. That's the risk, I suppose. Yep. It that opportunity only opened itself up to him because his opponent was trying to be so aggressive and here come the villagers that tower continues to be useless can we get a damage check on that tower actually how much damage that tower has done forward before we uh get out of this game as king steven not much goes for the gg yeah not not much it, it dealt 25 <laughs> damage <laughs> oh i mean in all fairness right tower wasn't great but the rest of the strategy just didn't flow together here for King Steven. He wasn't able to win water fast enough. Khosrow gets the job done. And Khosrow up 2-0. And it, it definitely seems like Khosrow is the better economic player. 
And if there's aggression that comes towards him, like the landing in game one, which could be crazy, or the men at arms on the crack terrain here in game two, he just doesn't make it look like it's ever going to be effective. He's so good at just swatting mm -hmm. that pressure away. Yeah, and just so calm about it too. And, and the same thing for the first series where he was, he clearly realized by like game two that he mm -hmm. was the better player. And then every single reaction is so calmly done. He's even having fun in the middle of the game. So you saw with the Cabeto micro with the double university tech, everything like that. The personality of this cause route player is screaming Viper to me. Now yeah. we just have to see if the execution keeps up. And as for King Steven, we both think it's doubt. We, I, I've said this many times and I forget who I, I originally heard say it, but um, the quota I love to reference is doubt is the best player in the world for two games out of every set. I don't think we've seen those two games yet. Let's see. We're going to hop into game number three. Thank you everybody again for the support. Welcome everybody. Hope you're doing well out there. Hope you're enjoying these games. Everyone's here to see, can King Steven get one on the board? And King Steven takes it to Cup. Now, in the first round, King what? Steven played on this map. It was a banger, and he won uh, with the Korean. So he sticks to that game plan here. And then we've got Khosrow playing as the Byzantines. Now, I believe that Khosrow sacked the Byzantines historically. But then yeah. again, he did build a better Antioch. So maybe he's... Maybe he he's building a better Byzantines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Cup Definitive Edition by Cosro. <laughs> and every all of the previous inhabitants of Cup will come and live in this cup. Yes. Uh, better by better than Cup. Better yeah. better than Cup. I built uh Cosro built this. Uh it's, it's yes. what I'm I'm remembering. <laughs> so we we saw some interesting things on this, but I, I gotta explain the map elements because I feel like it's very easy for new people to miss out on this and there's going to be at least one person who hasn't seen any games here, I imagine. So the middle aspect on Cup is really the most telling. You've you got the resources on the outside, which is great. Uh, you've got, you know, all this wood, all this stone and gold. But you've got these two separate areas of amphibious terrain. So you can use land units there. You can also use water units. The one side is more expansive where you have, like, more space and then the extra gold. But that is not the side that is directly between the player bases. So the area between the player bases more important for general map control and the other areas for Gold Daven. We saw Khosrow, or, or excuse me, uh, King Steven, place towers in front of the opponent's TC the last time he played Cup. Uh, I would expect that in Castle Age, King Steven is going to try and do something similar here. Yeah, at the same time, though, you load into this game, you're Koreans, and you see Byzantines on the other side. Yeah. Like I know Byzantines counter a lot of civilizations, Koreans don't feel like they have too many options against them, do they? If you don't get that early damage done? I think the cheaper ships and the cheaper, uh, like the, the savings on wood with any unit that costs wood, which is pretty much everything Koreans make, I think that's underrated. I think you okay. can really save a lot of resources with that. I think this really comes down to early cast age. If you can have a good feudal age here as King Stephen, and build towers that will upgrade to guard towers instantly in early castle i think that is your win condition here to to push the byzantines back but i agree that byzantines have a lot of counter options and it's the same as like malians against goths in the previous game there's more flexibility for uh <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh mapu i love you here. i i love you mapu <laughs> thank you that is cinematic right there i was also noticing if we're talking about animals the woman that is underneath the boar on King Stephen's TC, there is a woman hiding. She's uh -huh. gathering meat underneath the boar. Fascinating. Yeah, I mean, sometimes oh. you really just you just gotta. No one wants to to get some of those those organs. I, I don't know, but uh, yeah. Um, what was I saying? What the God? The bird distracted me. We don't remember. Me. What, what? It's not important. Oh, oh another okay. one. No, no, no. I was just gonna say that the Byzantines are more adaptive. And we said that on the draft, like King Stephen's going to have the plans. Khosrow is going to is going to pick the sieves that allow him to adapt a little bit more on the fly. And so that whatever game plan it is for King Stephen, beyond forgetting to build Ooh, a house, house, which he's going maybe, to build now. Oh, 
At uh, least he can get loom. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, he's getting get loom. loom. It's fine. Okay, I'm going to ask you the same thing I asked the last time we casted this together. And you, yeah. like the legend you are, actually got the number correct. Yeah. How many turtle ships do we see in this game? Uh, one. One, okay. I'm going to go with... He made two last time, and it was moderately effective. And King yep. Steven might think he needs more to, you know, to, to really break this Cosrail guy. I'm going to go with four, actually, which I think okay. is bold, but we'll see. How many Dromans do we see this game? Because that's a unit that I think could be real good here. Ooh. I'm going to go with uh three three and the three might be enough for king steven to tap out i figure if we get to that stage the dramans yep. will come out when kazra has a lot of control kazra is being annoying dude like kazra is like i'm just gonna kill your fishing ships and king steven's got to continue to move them around and you can tell that king steven's tried to do the same Ooh, hasn't exactly worked could out. Find so that far. villager though. He's gonna find the dock. He's gonna see the dock, and the quick wall is already there from Cosrow. So that dock will not be denied. The scout is coming over. It's the same feudal age time for both. So not one of them is gonna get the initial advantage with the scout. Still great harassment, like you said, from Cosrow, and great job from Steven to keep the fish alive for as long as he did. Yeah. So both players have realized the opponent's fishing the other water area. So they're docking the opponent's area. At least King Steven knows his opponent's doing it. And Kazra doesn't have scouting intel that this is happening from his opponent. So I would say advantage to King Steven in that regard. Now we do have to remember Byzantines have faster fires. they like faster working fires. So in a fire ship war, uh, it should be advantage Byzantines. We'll see. Byzantines nice have a decent win Steven. rate. And yeah, nice job from Steven because he, he knew that... He needed some extra hits there to compete with Kazrao, and now Kazrao's going to take him on home. Kazrao can't harass those fish with the scout anymore. King Steven being very active with that, getting an extra hit, like you said. Really, really solid. Yeah. And he also pulled the scout away from the docks, and he's kind of chasing him away from the docks, too. So Kazrao doesn't know that there's two docks in that northern pond. The fires are going to come out here. The scout is not in the right position. And... While he can win the one-on-one -on -one fire battles, he's not going to win against two dock production in the north. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's just too late to produce here for Cosrail. I think King Steven will already recognize that he's going to lose his fish. I, you know, it's something you got to expect in such a small area. But what you don't want is to lose your fish and then have your opponent have theirs. And that's why he went for the double dock production. And he should have the head start in production. And the way I see this going is King Steven will lose his fish. Cosrao should lose his fish as well. And then we'll have a very even game. Cosrao has 11 villagers in the queue. That is wild. Ooh. That is a yeah. lot of food bank there. It's also kind of hiding your score from your opponent too. Yeah, it, normally that is indicative of a player who is very nervous. Um, and, 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 you know, like you don't think about the balance, whereas King Steven there is... Is not really doing the same. Obviously, King Steven doesn't have that amount of food. Looks like Kazrao has canceled some of his vills. But both players adding a barracks now. But I, I think this is a nice position for King Steven. You have the control of the more important area long term, which is mm -hmm. the northern area of water. And it hasn't become an issue that the Byzantines have the faster fires. It hasn't become an issue that the Byzantines can make demos and you cannot. So this is a dream start here, I'd say, for this matchup. Yeah, good expansion, too, from Steven. Like, he makes four fires. He's surrounding that dock. He realizes, I can probably retain water control. I'm going to add fish. So, four fishing ships right away after taking that control. He will replace the food eco that he lost in the south. And now he's going for a wall here. It is important to note that demolition rafts are not possible from Steven with Koreans. For the, yeah, for the Koreans. Yep. There's a dock from Kazra. I get what Kazra's doing here. You don't want your opponent to fish. That's a really nice move, but King Steven scouting around the map is going to scout it right away. Could even scout Kazra's scout and maybe go in for the kill. 
So, Khazra's going to come back on water there. They're definitely going to reach Castlate at a similar time. Now is when I'm starting to think about... Well, no, not now. Um, but maybe in like three minutes is when the Korean player should be thinking, should I have two to three villagers on stone? And should I consider yep. making some towers? Because I think the towers are going to be such an important part of the Korean success here. Yeah, whatever you do, don't make those towers on the swamp terrain to the south either, because you're one demo yep. away from losing all of your initiative. Oh, God. And that's a oh, demo God. coming out. That's a really bad demo from Kosra. That was a disastrous demo. That that was the perfect what? lineup. That that was like the ball was on the tee there, and Kosra just completely whiffed it. Not that I can relate to that in, in my experience growing up, but... Wow, that, that was horrible for Cosrel, and that gives King Steven an idea, of course. My opponent's coming to fight back on water. And so again, advantage King Steven, I would say. Res collected slightly ahead for him. Castlade should come in at even a better time. And this is what King Steven wanted here, Dave. Finally, he isn't behind massively at the start, and it's even. And in these situations, that's where King Steven starts to cook. Yeah, both players will go up. Steven's on the way up first, though. He's on the way up first. And the question is, does he go for the eco expansion or does he send villagers forward to start getting that position? Yeah. I think he's going out to stone now. Another thought here, Dave. Do you try and force down a dock again where you, where you started between the players? Because when he towered before, he was mm -hmm. towering there. And that would also, if you get a dock down, you can just squeeze out a turtle ship in early cast age, which could possibly be very strong. Yeah. Hmm, I don't, I honestly don't know because if you're Steven, you have to feel like you're ahead on eco now. You've had the fish, yeah, true. right? Your opponent, yeah, true. this fish died yeah. really, really early. Uh, you were able to replace yours and you have full walls at your own base. So you feel pretty secure. And now the question is like, can I get even further ahead in my economy and then snowball into that forward position? He's sending three villagers forward right now. He's already going for the tower and it's not on that amphibious terrain. It's on the front of Kozrao's base as he finally clears up this Navy. However, Kozrao has an archer. Yeah, I think here you have to place a tower next to your ships and then finish that tower later. I think that's This is at least play. one turtle territory. This is one turtle territory, at least. Right? To yeah, protect against the archers? Yeah, turtle would be sick. I mean, the fires themselves are going to be sick. I know it's Byzantine buildings, but to know the archers are out there and have not lost anything is great. Now, you also have the fires in range of your opponent's buildings. I think the best players, as exciting as a turtle is, they actually go for a TC at home. Because this is such a big attack, mm. the opponent is going to have to respect it. A lot of players are going to go for the economy first. We're going to see a siege workshop from King Steven. This is what he did before. It was a tower and a siege push. He ended up taking out Salim the Grim's TCs. Finally, his plans are panning out. Guard towers are coming up. And Khazra needs an answer for this. God, Turtle would have been so good here. But I guess he can go Maganel, right? And the Maganel can move onto the land. And then he can yeah. save those resources. Turtle ships are very expensive. There's the second town center you were mentioning. It is worth pointing out that both the stones from Steven are outside of his main walls. Very unfortunate yep. stone positions for him. So long term, he'll probably want to add a town center on there once these archers doubt, inevitably doubt, leave this position. Doubt, don't, doubt, don't let this happen. Uh, he's got King a Steven, coming sorry, out. Don't there. let he's this fine. happen. He's got, he's fine. He's the got a manual coming out. Watch. Villagers there are weak. Manganel's on the way. Siege could be a surprise. Kozrael backs away. Good micro from Kozrael. Kozrael now goes in to snipe the weak villagers with confidence. Oh, God. But he only killed one. I mean, he did a great job not losing archers, but the tower's going to go up. And that tower with Bodkin is really annoying. This is a big problem. Yeah, so is that knight, though. He might snipe the Manganel, though the villagers are there to repair. The knight has to back away. Third town center now from Steven. And Steven's really cooking here. If he gets another tower on that stone and mm -hmm. on that wood line, suddenly we've got this line of death on the front side of Kozra's base that he really can't clear up until he hits Imperial Age. And he's going to be on the defensive the entire time. I think Kozra will try and extend outward soon with that land army and hit Steven at home. So Steven will need to do something to lock down those stones I mentioned about. But other than that, 
there's really not much of a risk. Is that is that scout auto scouting right now? No, it's manually scouting. Okay. Yeah, I, I just saw the movement from the scouts. That stone is uh, not scouted, but it is exposed. Now, Dave, I think if your opponent has shown you a knight, you need to be careful at your main base right now if you're King Steven. You're pressuring a lot. Yeah. This is where you're going to focus. But the best players, we've seen it so many times, they're going to squeak a knight or a couple units, random fire there. They're going to find a way to distract you. But at the same time, I, I love how King Steven has continued to just push through and, and be aggressive this whole time. Korean Cav Archers. Any more conf uh, confirmation we need? I know they're better now than they used to be, but still, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, Korean Cav Archers are cheaper. The, the Their strength themselves is not necessarily changed. I they like the it, armor though, upgrades I think... automatically. It's fantastic. Yeah, and you already have Bodkin. So, so since you already yeah. have Bodkin Arrow as King Steven kills his own villager on the house. <laughs> Oh my god, I Almost thought he was going to kill another, another one, one there. <laughs> but hey, um, we definitely don't know who this player is, folks. He does kill the monk there. The TC is starting to go down, and King Steven's position continues to grow and grow and grow. And like, Khazra has not ever found a real answer. It's been random knights. You know, it's been a couple archers in counterattack, but it has primarily been a boom for Khazra. And, and I am not sure that he can just sit back like this without finding a real solid response right now he's off of his golds this is why you need to deny that first tower while the initial yeah. tower didn't look fantastic it was kind of like on the water he was able to support it with his ships with his mangonels there and once that first tower is up you go for the second once the second one's up you go for the third the fourth the fifth and they're all supporting each other and redemption comes in for cause route but if the mangonels are sitting near the towers, you can't convert them because the towers are really Agreed. good against the monks. So this line of death is just terrible for Khazrau. And he wins the mangonel war. No surprise it's, there as Steven the now micro, tries to advance the problem with this for King Steven. Yep. It's never the strategy with King Steven. It is just the micro. And he lost a mangonel. There his tower gets denied. There he had to delete a, 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 a mangonel. And so Khazrau is like still hanging in here. He still hasn't lost this TC. He has found gold elsewhere. And Khazral has collected nice amount of resources. Again, he gets another hit on the Cav Archers. I think right now, King Steven is thinking, where is my opponent getting gold? I I'm seeing two of his golds. Surely he's on gold somewhere. But by the time he gets over here, he's going to see that there's a town center because Khazral's protecting that right now with the new TC. Idle economy time. It's a lot more for Khosrow right now. 48 yeah, minutes versus 19, and it get, oh. it puts into perspective oh. what's happening. Can he get the monks? He gets one. I don't think oh. he can get this without being converted. He can! Oh, that's huge. I mean, those Cav Archers are barely alive. Those Cav Archers are on life support, and they just killed two healthy monks there. Remember, the access to gold is a big issue for Khosrow in the long run here. So, you know, he if he doesn't have gold... He's not going to be able to make more monks. He's not going to be able to get to the Imperial Age. So King Steven just wants time now to chill. These towers are just meant to be protected at all costs now. He's no longer pushing. It's keep these towers up and make it to the Imperial Age with a big economy. And you can see the shift. He's up to 35 on food now. In my opinion, King Steven is in the perfect position to win this game. He yep. just has to ensure that he doesn't allow Khosrow a lot more room to breathe. I think once that tower is completed, then you focus on getting a castle. Yeah, well, he's going yeah. for another tower in the south there, okay, on the stone. That's an interesting one. Maybe he wants to extend outwards for that. You focus on a castle. Once you have the castle, you try and go up to Imperial Age because mm -hmm. Imperial Age would upgrade all of these towers instantaneously. Yeah. And then you can get Yubsiong after that. Wow. Nice, nice counter tower there from Khosrow. From Khosrow. Yeah, nice spot. He's going to have a lot of vision with the Byzantines. But what he can't do, he's Dave... with Rams, he, too. He can't... He can't... He shouldn't be able to realistically push with Rams. Because the opponent has so many towers there. Like, those towers should focus down the monks. And the monks should die. And they are. And then the Manganels... Oh, wow. This is actually insane from Khosrow. It, it's very, very uncommon to go underneath all these towers. It's a risky it's play for him. Work. He's going to lose his Manganel. It shows... It's not going to work. It... And the tower is it gonna shows how up. difficult this is. Yeah, even with great yeah. micro there and maybe suboptimal micro from Steven, he did he did manage to pull it out at the end there. 
it shows how difficult that push is. You got to wait to limp, or you got to place a castle near those towers to take them out. So, so tough to do anything against those. Steven's about to click up, Tristan. Steven's got 600 stone. Things are looking real good for Steven right now. And remember, we said King Steven might want an aggressive castle which is risky against Byzantines. He's going to place a castle forward. He is going to click up to the Imperial Age. He's going to be faster than the Byzantines. And we are also seeing our first turtle ship. So he's going to turtle the other side. He's got the towers here. Khosrau places his own castle. He wants that area to be protected. And he clicks up to the Imperial Age as well. Oh, boy. Byzantine castles have more HP, but... I mean, you're completely surrounded. You're on the defensive this entire time. And like yep. you keep mentioning, the gold supply, if that castle goes down, going to be very, very limited. Also, love to see another keep in the north on that gold from Khosrau. Did you see Khosrau, who has redemption, consider converting that tower for a second? He started yeah. to send the monk forward. This, to me, you know, there's only so many players that would desperately want to steal someone else's tower. <laughs> Uh, he's not going to do that. The castle will take care of two of these. He doesn't know his opponent has that other castle right now. It's just repairing the town center with a one villager, like, against towers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he does know about that so, castle. So calm there. There go the villagers. They might complete this, but Khosrau deleting his houses. He's going to try and what wall this in. Doesn't work. That, that tower going will up. likely go up. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be really close actually, but it's at eighty percent. I think the tower will go up. And there's gonna no be murder a keep holes. soon. Yeah. Oh, it's not a doubt tower, but it might be converted. Oh god, are we gonna see this tower deleted? Okay, it should be. Hazar needs to stop attacking it. Stop attacking it. And then a monk race he for the relic on the other side. He's gonna try and snipe the monk here. Doesn't Monk get it. is not going to get the conversion on the tower. Monk will get relic number look two, at him, though. Look at him pull the villagers away just in time before the tower went down as Steven deletes it. But he was really trying to convert that. Dave, Trebs at the key here. Trebs at the key. King Steven knows that Khosrow has a castle. You got to know your opponent's Byzantines here. The resources are looking amazing for King Steven, but can he spend it? Can he win a treb war against Byzantines? I, I've seen Khosrow... If he is who we think he is, do some crazy things and come back throughout mm -hmm. his career. He has been backed into corners and he has somehow been able to come back. He's gonna go fast fires there. He's gonna go Trebs. This is still 111 villagers for both. And if Khosrow can win the Treb War, the sky is the limit for him here. You cannot let him get that water control because here they come, the Drummonds. Yep. Yep. They're making their way onto the water. You can't let him get full control over that water. You need something there. That tower is going to help a little bit. The skirms are coming in. The trebs are working away on the castle. The eco is fantastic for Steven, but Khosrow seems very comfortable just kind of sitting in this corner and slowly pushing everything back. Now, Khosrow doesn't have access to a lot of stone. He did, however, just sneak to the north to find some extra stone and gold. Now, that's something King Steven had an outpost for in the past. But I think King Steven now not thinking about that. And so that's an area where Khosrau is really going to be able to, to have some success. Uh, meanwhile, we've got a castle from Khosrau coming in this area. So he's thinking, like, how could Khosrau be alive oh if I hit him from the other side too? It's a nice thought. But Dave, if I see Dramans and I see Byzantines with castles, I, I cannot help but believe that the Byzantines could still get the job done here. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think Khosra might win this game at this rate. Like, he denied that little counter raid with the skirms. The Byzantine healing was kind of going hard there. He snuck out to the stone at the top of the yep. map, which King Steven wasn't tracking. He's now got eyes on this castle, and he's taking full control of the water in the south there. And Steven has lost his entire line of towers in the middle. He is I getting Ypsiung right now, but it's, it's going to be a difficult push here. Yeah, I agree. I think, like, if you just are getting skirms into Khosrau's eco, and you are, um, if you're building keeps into this corner, it could be okay. But that's not it. Like, I guess I said into the eco. This castle, also not it. Like, he just did not expect the Dramans, Dave. 
the eco, the resources, everything's great for King Steven. I'm just wondering, is he losing too many units here? You got monks and bomber cannons from Khazrael trying to convert and kill the siege. He's going to kill one of the trebuchets. He's going to lose his other monk. And the micro No attack rounds from, from those bomber cannons either. Uh, He's just uh, right clicking. Uh, uh. And the trep goes down. Trebs go oh, down. God. And now the cannons are starting to go down as well. And the great Khazrael. He's ready to push out of his corner. He even finds that stone. So resourceful, so aware. So he, he has two areas where he's taking stone now. But uh, King Steven, if Koreans get heresy, he needs to consider that. Like anything he can get so these monks don't convert his cannons would be amazing. He's going YOLO with skirms and YOLO with bomber cannons through the middle. Because at this point, he, he's given up on trying to hit different angles with the Koreans. The one thing that Steven has is resources right now. He's floating yep. so many resources and the bomber cannons are now being thrown away. It's fine because he has 4,000 gold available to him. <laughs> so it's not like he's, you know, wasting that gold there. He can easily yep. replace that. Still trying to focus on this side as all three bomber cannons are targeted for conversion. Some of those are really weak. Great job from Steven to get away, but Khosrau surviving and taking the extra resources in the corners of the map it's just so and it's not just like steven and it's it's not just like corners of the map it's the corner mm -hmm. that king steven should have access to like you as a player should know those stones are there we've got stables from cause to potentially raid king steven needs to notice that dave i think if monks are your worry because right now that's the concern for king steven i would really like to see him walk forward buy stone and just drop more keeps next to where he's going to go for the bombard cannon push now he does that's notice that now so that that's gonna that's gonna neutralize that a little bit potentially he's gonna get the relic but uh you know it just you, you do wonder because of the speculation on Khosrau who he is and what we're seeing here if Khosrau could find himself out of this we gotta say it felt inevitable to me but king steven's got like he's got hussars being saved from the side He's going to raid as well. He's got that stone now accessible. And Khosrow's still stuck in a corner right now. Drummonds are still really good, though. And along with fast fire, too. Drummonds fast fire, really, really tough to take this bottom pond. And if you don't take that yep. bottom pond, he's going to control all of these stables and everything you're trying to push forward with. And he's going to yeah, control true. the front side of your base. You have the gold in the middle. But Cosro is doing a fantastic job of saving up the gold. However, we've got a new angle to push from. A nice angle here from Steven with the tower and the Trebs and the bomber cannons and a second tower now controlling that gold from Cosro. Really, really solid job from Steven. Cosro is 200 pop on 15% of the map. Like he is truly yep. squished here. He also can't take his main stone. He also can't take a lot of his gold. Like he... How he's been able to somehow squeeze all this pop into this is wild to me. Oh my god. Dude, those towers Look have the same range as the Look how fast the towers drummers. with heated shot are sh sh shredding the ships here. Yep. And that, that's a big deal here. King Steven's going to still hold control of water because of the towers. All the dramas are going to go down. What a hold from King Steven. Really, really sick. I didn't realize. I thought Dramans would have an additional range advantage. But I guess with the Korean towers with the unique tech, I've never seen yeah. that matchup before. And yep. Drummonds aren't able to do anything against them. And Steven has kind of like reclaimed this area. He's taking the stone up there, getting harassed a little bit, but that's not the biggest deal. I love the angle shift from him up to the north behind these wood lines, making it very difficult for Khosrau to push this back. Zero on gold for Khosrau. Zero on gold. 5,000 gold for King Steven. And King Steven, it might have taken him time. But it was always going to take time to break someone as mighty as Khosrau. He'll have Hussar to mix in against the skirms he's seeing. It, he, he still sees all this stone and gold that Khosrau is unable to take. And Khosrau right now is moments away from being broken, in my opinion, Dave. I know his pop is high, but you can't just be putting out fires around your base forever before your pop just disappears. It's the freaking towers. The towers from Koreans are just kind of pushing every counter unit that he has back, right? They deal with the Dromans, yep. more range than them. They deal with the monks that want to convert the bomber and cannons. They're dealing with the units that Khosrau is sending in, and Steven has done a great job setting them up behind. That castle falls. 
This looks like the end for Cosrow. I think we've got a win on the board for Steven here, Tristan. 6,000 gold in the bank now. Crazy, crazy strategy here. I mean, to go Hussar is so good here too because it was purely monk defense from Cosrow. And monks were really the strongest thing from Cosrow, but access to gold became the issue. They switched back and forth on water. Now at this point, King Steven's got all the water. Cosrow, he's not going to want to quit when his population says 180. But he's got Korean keeps fully upgraded all around them right now. There will probably be more. And his buildings are getting battered down. And he's got no potential for counterattacks at the moment. Yeah, 173 population. The pop is still really close, which is astounding right now. Because it just yeah. feels like there's yeah. nothing here from Cosrow. But once these towers are set up... You, you can't push this, man. The tribe's still working away on the buildings behind. The towers are being built. The skirmishers and halves are dying. Arrow slits now coming in, so almost fully upgraded. What do and you, what do, you do here? It's funny. King Steven is like, he doesn't need to spend his gold. The only gold unit he needs is Bombard Cannon. So the Bombard Cannons are there. They'll take the trebs in the buildings. The skirms and the hussars are actually perfect. You now, remember... Skirms are actually cheaper, too, with Koreans. You do save some wood there. This, both these civilizations actually have a discount, technically, uh, for their skirms. And Khosrow's still fighting, Dave, but continuing to lose ground. And I, I, I want to take it back to what we said about these two players. Khosrow has picked the adaptive civilizations, the civs that he mm -hmm. can adjust on the fly with. Byzantines are perfect there. King Stephen picks civs where if things go according to plan, it will look very, very good. And finally in this series... He found the plan, which which clicked, and it was all through those towers, through the middle. How much gold is even left in the middle? Even if Khosrow pushes this back, <laughs> right? All of this. How much gold is even left in that middle area as he tries to defend this treb? He's 13K. trying to repair it. He's yeah. not going to get it. Not much. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's 13k left on the map, and a there's lot of that still a gold pile in Steven's base. base. Yeah. That's the way to do it, dude. That's the way to do it, is just take all that gold. I mean, no relics now for Khosrow as well. Again, Khosrow's like, if you're going to beat me, you gotta, you're gotta, you going to have to fight for it. And we have the GG called. And there have not Capital. been many games in this tournament where Khosrow has lost. He lost one game in the first round, and that was it. And King Steven finally gets a win on the board. And I'm excited for the rest of this series. I, I know King steven has got more strategies, which are map-specific. Clearly there, at times, the micro wasn't good. But if he can get the positions... If he can get the matchups he wants, he could absolutely tie this series up in the next game. Very well executed from King Steven. All of the momentum on that game was based around the towers as we see the archers coming in. Box formation, by the way. And he goes forward and then dodges back right on time from that Mangonel shot. Great micro there from Cosmo. But when Steven had the line of towers that game, right? It was feeling really good for him. He lost it. Momentum shifted over to Cosrow. Then he put some more towers in the south to deny the Dromans and another tower in the north. And that just gives him the position to push with his units. It gives him the comfort and it's impossible for Cosrow, even if he kills the main army, to push further than that line of towers. Really solid mm -hmm. gameplay from Steven and a great recovery too. It's going to be A. a. Hmm. Okay, so... Khosrow's playing as the Italians, which we have seen a lot of on this map. But we have seen some other civilizations played um, th that we didn't see in the past. And the reason we didn't see a lot of those civs in the past is because they did not exist. Uh, the Dravidians weren't around last Hidden Cup. And King Stephen goes for the Dravidians, a flexible water civ, a civ that will lack some flexibility later on on land. But I would say a very smooth when you're looking to dock, and I think both players are going to do that here, Dave. I think Dravidians matches up well against Italians in the late game, too. If you think about their options. Like the faster firing skirms, if Italians want to play into archers, oof, not not the greatest, right? And then you think mm -hmm. about the, the halves from Dravidians, great if they want to make a cavalry switch as Italians. You've got the uh, the Bombard cannons as well. Like, ooh, I don't, I don't know, man. I think Dravidians, if you take it late, could be a really solid option. It is always interesting because uh, when it comes to civs and their unique units, if you can find a matchup where the opponent's unique unit just isn't valuable at all, that, yeah, that can really be quite solid. nice. And so I think in this case, the Italians, they're picked a lot because a lot of civs on this map uh, go for the strong cav, right? 
So Paladin or like Mangadai or something from Mongols. But you're not going to see Cav from the Dravidians. Now, they do have elephants. But yeah, I agree. I think Dravidians will lack some mobility. But I could see them being quite strong. And, and there we have Khosrow coming forward rather early here, choosing not to push deer. And he's going to steal two pigs away here from King Stephen. So that's interesting. Um, a little bit lamey here from Khosrow. Khosrow has typically played fairly defensive. So maybe he's a little he, worried now, losing that game. Did he steal two pigs or did he steal three? Because there was another one that was heading back. He might have stolen one that was scouting from Stephen as well. Yeah, I don't know the where the scouting was. Yeah. That's really good for so Khosrow regardless. So this dock timing is interesting. So King Stephen is going for the same build order that we saw from Gregory the Seventh when Gregory the Seventh lost 4-0. I think that's been forgotten about now by a lot of people. But if you look at where King Stephen's taking wood, guys, King Stephen is not taking wood on a lumber camp. King Stephen is taking wood on his straggler trees. Now, Gregory got 4-0'd, and Gregory also had gone for the goth strategy on evacuation. So this further reinforces in my mind that whoever lost 4-0 against Gajamata round one is very close to and knows King Stephen very well. And I'm going to take it one step further. The player who in Hidden Cup history has always had similar strategies to doubt has been Tato. And everyone seems to think it was Gajamata that was Tato. But Nikov and some other pros seem to think that maybe Tato was Gregory the Seventh on day one. And he lost 4-0 against who they think was ACCM. Yep. So, and and I said plenty, Nikov's been getting plenty of flack for this, but I keep saying if he's right about this, I mean, you got to give him credit because that's yeah. a, that's a crazy idea, right? It would mean, if that prediction is correct, that Tata lost round one and ACCM is going to the semis at the very least. Yep. But stay stay, stay humble. Yep, stay humble. Stay but humble. I wanted to point that out there. And also somebody, I know I'm, I'm, I'm getting one guide here. I'm responding to one guy. But somebody said, no, T90, they could have seen how everyone else played by now. No, not by the quarterfinals. The round of 16 of the quarterfinals all played behind closed doors. The players had no intel. They played these games without knowing how anyone played their games. That will change come the semifinals, which will be tomorrow. So this is all the same build that we had Gregory the Seventh use, and nobody would have had any intel on that. So this has to be practiced. Okay. Villager now coming forward from Khosrau. We've got another villager coming forward. So we might have a water battle here, unsurprisingly. And there's the second dock. I would expect the second dock soon from King Stephen. One fishing ship from Stephen. Two fishing ships from Khosrau. Feudal Age going to be a little bit faster for Steven, though. Yeah, where this gets awkward with the Dravidian build is... You, you wish you had the wood like a minute before you hit Feudal. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But because you have to wait for it... Uh, right now, your eco is definitely a bit awkward. Now, the Italians have... It's cheaper for them to go up to each age... It's also cheaper dock tech, so really good long term for the Italians. But this could be great for King Stephen. This build gets him to feudal age faster, and he is, already has the scout lead. So he's going to make ships first, and then he might be able to, to weaken that scout from Khosrau. So big, big deal there. Uh, Khosrau is going to have to either try and get the hill or try and get over to uh, his base again, which is a long way away. Thanks, Stats Guy. Yeah, thanks, Stats Guy. Haven't having a lot of fun there, I can tell. Dave, I think that Khosrow Scout actually has a decent chance to survive, but there is a lot of weaving involved between these wood lines. No, and I did dead, just dude. say it would survive. I said it would survive, so it's not going. He's not going to survive, right? He's dead in three fire galleys. Two, one. Huh? Nice call. Close. You even. Wow, you even timed the, the little repathing there. Well, that's huge for King Steven now. There's a lot more incentive to maybe go for lands because Khosrow won't be able to scout it. Now I'm wondering if players are going to repair. Uh, I found Gregory... Oh, God. I found Gregory was very stubborn and didn't repair ships against Gajamata yeah. round one. I think you have to repair ships in a fire galley war, and we see both players doing that now. 
Also interesting when people add in demos, right? A lot of people won't start adding in the demos until like five fire galleys are mm -hmm. on the water. But with the re with the repair villager going onto this marsh terrain and the potential to demo that as well, it becomes a little bit more viable. Great job from Steven to not overcommit for that demo. He just took what he could get there because it was already weak as another demo raft comes in from Cosrow. He's trying to get a good one himself and he's trying to hide it behind the fires. So they can tank all of the damage as Steven now comes out with another one. Takes what he can get. And we'll go back to repair. So good for both so far. Also nice for Kazra that his three fishing ships are working. And King Steven's only had one this entire time. I know King Steven's had the better of the kills. But that is something. And especially when Italians are saving on their fish. They now have more fish. And it also be cheaper to go to the next stage. Kazra's not going to complain about that. Like, this is currently 50-50 on water. You take the 50-50 if you have the edge with the fish there. But, I mean, it, we're talking about the eco transitions as well. Farms are going to be okay, needed. Okay, okay. Who puts that farm placement? Reddit, we need you. That is a very weird farm placement from Steven. For the first farm. On the TC. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Big demo uh -oh. here. Big demo here. Nice demo there from Kozral. And maybe King Steven was too worried about his farm placement. To be able to notice that these fires came in but he was certainly distracted the repairs are coming in he would love his own demo right now how long do you stay here if you're cause Ral? beautiful splits away we've got two demos following up here one ship's gonna go down he's gonna get two ships and he should do you get the fish nice job from steven really solid just get it delete the it there we go Really, yeah. really solid job from Steven. He can go in there with that fire as we see the other farms now being added. It's a strange one. Ooh. Left side of the TC. Yeah, really good moment here for King Steven. Obviously, he still has one fishing ship, so that's even. It's even Steven on uh, the fishing ship count, but not on the Navy count anymore. And it looks like right now, Kozrao's kind of giving up. He's just going to make some demos, which might be demos... Uh, that he'll hide for a moment. He might wait for King Steven to come over here outside the dock and, and then try and utilize them. Well, the wood upgrade was a little bit late there for Steven. Mm -hmm. However, he's won the water. He's going to be pretty happy about that one. The food eco for him is not on the same level as Kozra, though. Kozra yep. is at 500 food in the bank. We've got the mill up there from Steven. And uh, he's going to try and take those extra deer. Kozra just hanging out behind his walls. Kozra should be up to the castle age a little bit faster. Yeah, those those villagers got to be working on deer right now. There's just so many multitasking yeah. elements of the game. But you've got to be spam checking your idols and have those villagers on deer, Steven. I mean, come on, yeah, dude. It's the quarterfinal, Steven. Come on, long. you're the king, Steven. You're the king. They, they, they've got to be collecting hunt. There we go. And um, as Stats Guy continues to work his way out of a job, the plan for king stevens probably to market as well but beautiful play from kazrao res collected has been higher for him despite you know losing his fishing ships recently and the plan is always late game here so if he can transition get some tcs up maybe make some scouts maybe make maybe even upgrade ships there's lots of options and this castle h time is going to be sick now let's say we knew the players let's go with our assumption that this is viper how would Viper okay. play from this situation with Italians against Dravidians? Viper would go... Viper would go for the second TC right away within his walls. Mm -hmm. He would squeeze in the War Galley upgrade if he could. If he felt he needed it to kill the fish. And it's just three TC boom. Start to think about getting relics and just taking it late. Uh, it's not yeah. fancy, but it gets the job done. And then I think if this was doubt... If Doubt saw his opponent was in Castle Age faster and his opponent didn't have a scout, Doubt would definitely consider bringing a villager forward and going for some type of aggression here. This scout from Doubt also, or sorry, King Steven, would be a very Doubt thing to lose that and not heal it up and utilize it. He doesn't. Cosmo's like to trying to get the walls scout. up on the villagers so he can repair the dock in peace. And yeah, yeah Steven lets him get that. <laughs> so that wall is going to be tanking all of the fire damage and he's going to wait now behind the safety of that dock until Castle Age comes in until he can get the War Galley upgrade and then he will eject. Might be forced to actually eject before that War Galley upgrade comes in. 
Yep, he did. He did just eject there. But I think that's okay for him if he can land the demo. He's going to nice land demo. the demo. Nice multitasking from Kozrael. King Steven will realize, okay, my opponent's coming back on water. I actually think right now, if you're King Steven, you prep to lose water. The de you just got land. You just got demoed big time. Yeah, it's over. You've had fish. There's not a lot of fish remaining. I think you actually just give up on it now. What a clear up there. That that was a really, really solid clear up. I I mean, Steven probably didn't expect that level of engagement from Cosrow. Cosrow getting the yep. War Galley upgrade. I'm not sure if he even needs it right now, but it is cheaper yeah. for Italians. So might as well let it go through and take out those docks. And then you can stop focusing on that water area. He's going to go for that second oh, TC man. right away. And he's going to add in more fish too. I bet you we see King Steven be too tempted and just buy a hundred stone here and try and use all this wood that's about to be there to go for to like go an four instant TC. four TC boom. That is a that is a classic pro. That is an older pro type of move. Five hundred food in the bank too. Yeah, dude. Oh it's the temptation boy. Is there on a map that goes late game, I, I think it might be worth trying it here. Especially if your opponent has fish, you, you might feel the need to get more vills. We're going to see a monastery there. That's interesting. But look at these resources. Wood upgrade, farm upgrade. We're going to see second TC. We're going to see eventual third TC, though it was canceled. And Steven's going to replace it now. So yeah, big old, big old boom. And then at home, Kozrael. Odd stone. Have... He bought more stone, dude. Yeah, He's doing it. This is down confirmed, dude. Down confirmed. I love it. And honestly, I say doubt confirmed. I think that the situation just felt right for really anybody. But when you're a player who used to play back in the 400 ping, uh, 7 TC meta, I, I think this is a comfort zone for a certain player. Heavy plow now coming in from Kozrow. Kozrow's just kind of hanging out behind this. It makes it difficult for him that he lost that scout. There is a potential for King Steven to go for some forward play, right? And yep. also potential for Steven to snag the relics early, which he's doing because Kozra doesn't have the scout on the field. So yep. Kozra might feel the need to add in a stable of his own and maybe get some light cap roaming around. You know me, I love that move that King Steven just did. He just attacked that house. He's making Kozra think, because Kozra's in the dark, that there could potentially be some action out there, but there's nothing, of course. But Kozra doesn't know that. And we'll see a barracks for Kazra. So Kazra is going to make some army here. The nice little boom. He's got the food eco with the Italians too. We're probably going to see him add some scouts soon. But I think that's why King uh, Steven's taking the forward relic right now. Yeah. Yeah. Really solid job from King Steven there. And he's going to get probably all the relics on the field. Maybe not the one in the top, top corner. I, I, you know how I feel about attacking random buildings with your scout when it's not necessary. Oh, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. You hate it. That's why I do it. I hate it. I know. And it's, you know, I, I, I hope you I hope you don't take it personally, but I'm going to do it anytime I get the chance with a scout outside of your base. Just nonstop. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. It's disgusting. <laughs> well, there's a TC Fourth here from center. Kazral on the stone, and, and he's dropping the stables now. Yeah, it, this feels natural. Now, I think that the eco is looking really nice right now for both players. I am very excited to see what Kazra does with the fish here because even prior to casting any games in Hidden Cup main event, I had some players who were in the qualifier who didn't quite make it say. They were curious on the meta here because these days we see a lot of fish trapping and the positioning yeah. of the fish trapping and the, the amount of fishing ships and fish traps added is actually a very important thing to tell you who is who because if we think this is the Viper, the Viper loves to place his fish ships, fishing ships right on top of the fish traps, just like the Black Forest players do. Uh, and, and sometimes he might even be inclined to add even more fishing ships. I don't know if adding more fishing ships makes sense when you already have four TCs and your opponent can just redock later. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that here shortly. I don't know if it's worth it here because of that swampy terrain, right? As the scout comes in for the monk, that monk's not going to get the conversion goes down. However, all of the relics have been grabbed here by King Steven. There's one monk wow. coming back with a relic right there, and there's another one coming from the left side. That monastery is in a relatively exposed position up there. 
Yeah. Uh, but King Steven should be able to get that relic income for quite a while here as the scout comes out from Khosrow. Will he be able to find this? Well, he sees the TC. Like have upgrades in. There's a garrison, so the light cap goes down. Wouldn't it be funny if they forgot to put it on Conquest and the Relic Countdown starts here? Okay, thank God they it did. is on Conquest. <laughs> I, You know, something that Khosrow is going to have a field day with here is the fact his opponent is wide open. Like, no walls mm -hmm. whatsoever for King Steven. So even if pikemen start to be produced by King Steven, it does feel like it could be a problem... If his opponent is able to just raid him in a lot of different areas. I mean, he's also oh, seen the monastery. How many oh, does he think all five relics are in that monastery? There's the castle from Steven. There's really not that much to deny it yet as he goes up to the Imperial Age. But my question is, does Khosrow, now that he sees that castle, choose to go for that monastery? Try and yeah. take it out and try and steal those relics because that would also be a very viper thing. I mean, it just feel we the monastery position is why he has five relics, but it always makes yeah. people feel uneasy when the five relics are so exposed. We, we should remember there are a lot of resources on this map. Having the relics is like it's nice, but it's not like having the eco that Kazra has, for example. The nice kills from Khosrow. Khosrow's going to click up to Imp as well, but Khosrow definitely has the better eco, and the light cap that he's been adding, this has been annoying, right? And you are not yeah. able to play simplify your game, which is what you want to do here if you're King Steven, if your opponent continues to be aggressive like this. So, as Italians, we were talking about the Civ matchup earlier. What do you go into? What's your primary unit here? I like Hussar and Arbalest. I don't think you need Genoese. I think you can go Hussar, Arbalest, Skirm. The fact that they okay. get fully upgraded Hussar, the fact that they have really good Arbs is great. King Steven's got an upgrade problem right now. He's also got a unit number problem, and he's also got a wall problem. And again, I've said it. I said He's it got before, a lot of problems, like, bro. I mean, for a player who has five relics, he really does. I'm just not seeing the ability to wall because the water control there from Khosrow. And Khosrow's going to keep doing this. And Khosrow's not going to stop. And it's only going to get worse if more and more upgrades come in. So King Steven, he's going to be an imp, but there's no way that he's going to be able to threaten Khosrow if he's this open like this. Like, just wall to the edge of the map there with something, yeah. right? Get, get yeah. a, a couple of Rumi over there to support your villagers. We see the crossbow here picking off the monks. Great job from Steven there. However, the light cab are in again under that TC on that gold. And they're also in the back of Steven's base because there's no walls whatsoever. There's a castle, but it's not really locking down any of the resources from him. I think King Steven very badly wanted a forward castle, fast imp, treb style push here. And he, he has to decide soon what he wants to do because he's losing far too much. You either commit to it, which he's going to do. You commit to it and you go forward. Or... You build a defensive castle so these raids don't do enough. And and we got to give him respect. He's going forward. He doesn't want the late game because he knows he'll be raided by Hussars. He's going to drop a, a castle that means business. And if he can get that castle up, I believe Scrim he's got a chance in, here to be able to, to push Khosrow's main oh, eco back. Oh, and Khosrow's found the villagers. Khosrow's found the villagers. Oh, no. And there's Skirm Tech's already in. There's Light Cav on the field right now. Can he deny this castle? Khosrow has seen this. There's a lot of crossbows. Are the crossbows this enough so doubt. to support these villagers? This is this is so doubt. I mean, the light cap are going to go down. The skirms don't have imp upgrades yet. So it's still castellate skirm. Skirms don't kill villagers that fast. But, you know, with the lack of walling, the now rush it, forcing the issue with the forward castle, the castle barely going up here is a very doubt move. But this Great works. Job. Because it get, he is a treb already. If he finds out that Khosra has the castle behind this, he makes another treb. And it, this is punching Khosra in the face. And notice what Khosra is not doing, Dave. Khosra is not raiding him anymore because he yep. has to respect the push. So it's actually a really nice decision from King Steven to do this. So uh, I love it. That's a stable. But I could easily see that villager. Great job by Mapu to look up there if Steven doesn't deal with it. I can see that villager making a siege workshop, making a monastery, and him trying to steal those relics. That's a great conversion <laughs> as well. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, yeah. 
And now you've got a random crossbow sitting on your gold. Those are the types of moments that Kazrael's going to want. Now, Kazrael, he doesn't have a lot of stone, Dave. So that's an issue. Now, by the way, he's getting gill nets. I assume for the fishing ships, which he's going to have the perfect fish traps. I guarantee the perfect fish traps for Kazrael. Oh! Hmm. I think that's smart, though. They can't be ranged okay. by the melee units. I think okay, that fair, is very fair. smart. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Not not perfect fit. I mean, they're not bad, right? This is coming from me. They're not bad. Push continues here from King Steven. And dude, Kazrael's run out of stone. This is a big deal for Kazrael. Kazrael just now getting that plus two armor. Like he's had 50 on food for so long. He's been spamming yeah. these light cap, but he wasn't able to get the technologies because he was also trying to tech into elite skirm and everything needed for that too. And I mean, Steven, with the benefit of these five relics, 1,700 gold gathered already from this, is able and to I'm... take the position at the front of Khosrow's base, and Khosrow might be in trouble. I'm believing in Steven. If if Khosrow can't make trebs, sure, he can make bombard cannons, but it's going to be very difficult to push this back. And you know Steven's going to drop another forward castle. Like, there's no question. Mm -hmm. there, there's a bombard cannon that was being produced out of that siege workshop. That, that bombard cannon just got denied. There's going to be another castle now from King Steven on that line. King Steven has a bit more time now to think about his eco. And actually, I, I was su I'm surprised the castle wasn't more aggressive here. But maybe he's got to be careful because Kazra does have skirms. He does have light cap. It's not a very gold-intensive army. And still no Arbalest for King Steven. Still no Elephant Archers or really anything uh, of value. Sorry, he did just complete the Arbalest upgrade. These little raids from Kazra are very annoying. He's getting a, a lot of value with low numbers of units. But Steven yeah. is just doing the macro thing, right? He's got his good yeah. eco behind, even though it's being disrupted occasionally. And he's pushing forward with the stronger military. Kazra might be just distracting himself. <laughs> With these raids on the sides, I, as we see a bazillion villagers now moving. Yeah, like King Steven's basically like, he's kind of evacuating his starting eco, it feels like. Like, he knows that that's yeah. exposed. Now, he, he has to notice this. Like, that'll still do significant damage. But to me, it feels like he's happy to just keep moving forward here. He's also got outposts on the shoreline. Dave, King Steven wins this game as long as he has some patrolling pikemen in his base. As long as he doesn't lose his siege on the front. King Steven's got an amazing position. Can he close it out? Yeah, the Eco KD is kind of telling the story here with the raids from Khosrow, but it, it hasn't mattered. The initiative is still in favor of King Steven. He's not able to get those Bombard cannons. Still raiding at the back, but Steven is fully focused on the main obje objective, which is kill his opponent. Yeah, and he has stone. I'd like to see another castle kind of near the belt of the pants here, as people call it, or there. That's good, too. This this makes the raid so much less effective. Allows you to focus on the main push. Remember, folks, Dravidian skirmishers fire faster. So having your own skirms in there, you can just outskirm the opponent. And then once the castle stack is is like there like this, you could actually make your roomy swordsman. I think your Rumi Swordsman could be a really strong unit against uh, Light Cabin Skirmisher. Takes out a Bombard Cannon, takes out a Treb, but the castle gone for Cosrow, and Cosrow's now going to try and extend up here. Steven, he's not letting him. He's got a mining camp already. And that's never... Cosrow's still believing I'm raiding him. I still have some space over here, but when he sees that, he might immediately be like, oh no. I thought I had this one. I was too well. I, I thought I was good, but this guy just will not stop. He might not even notice it. Like, he is really low on gold. Look at him evacuate for wood here. King Steven's got him on the brink. King Steven needs to, more importantly than pushing this area, actually, he just needs to deal with these bills in some capacity. Yep. And I think he is. I, I see your roomies being made, so I think he's going to uh, send some units there, but got to stop that from happening. Stops that from happening. I think we have a 2-2. Two -two. Oh, man, look at the relic generation as well, dude. Already 2,600 gold brought in yep. from getting those relics super early. And that's really, really helping with his army comp here. Even though most of it is skirms, he can afford all of the siege that he needs and the arbalist behind and the upgrades. Bombard Cannon, Skirmisher, Light Cav from Khosrow as he tries to hold. I think and we the need TC to see a castle there. And the TC will go up in the north. I yep. 
towers or a castle there would be so important. King Steven's just tossing in units to kill bomber cannons, knowing his opponent can't make more bomber cannons. Because of the lack of gold, Kozrao just passing. I don't know where these bills are going. He might have sent idols somewhere, but right through the castle fire go the villagers. And he notices it, and he had the bills to lose, but still, guys, King Steven, can he finish off Kozrao? He still hasn't hit the food eco. But he has denied most of the gold income from Kozra, which is the most important thing. The fact Kozra is at, still at 170 population is kind of impressive here. He's, he's once yeah. again just stuck in a corner. He's at 170 yeah. pop. And we look at King Steven. He's now teching into supplies to try and break him. The Bomber Cannon number is solid again for Kozra. Some really great Look. shots there. And still 54 on food. It's just the the issue for King Steven is the fights, right? It is not mm. the it is not the position. It is just the fights. His micro is not as good as Kozrao's, but his position is perfect. His strategy's been great. At TC, that is the only accessible gold for Kozrao is going to be tread down, and so if the champion switch comes in, this game's over. But it takes time. You got to go for. You know, uh, the champion upgrade, of course, all the way from Man at Arms to Champ. So we're seeing the upgrades Zero come in for King now. Steven. Yeah. Kazra, this is his time. This is his last chance to push. If he loses these Bombard Cannons, this is game over for him. And he needs more skirms, more like Cav in the queue. Look at all those champion techs coming in. It's like ominous music in the background, right? What is he going to do against champions with no gold? Absolutely nothing. I'm still concerned. That, like, this fight, I'm concerned for King Steven that the fight's going to be so good for Kazra here, Kazra can find gold again. kazra has got two tiles to work with. Oh, my God. There's also not a castle on the belt. It feels like Kazra has, has gotten some momentum, even without gold. And it just takes time to, you know, to get these techs in. And we still, if it's just Longsword, Dave, Lycav could deal with Longsword. So we, we need to see more from King Steven. And look at Kazra. Kazra says, you've got the time. I'm going to go raid again, so we might see Lycav on the move. We might see a castle from him in an important position. He's finding villager kills. Kazra is not finished. No, and there's an army here from King Steven. Does it get walled in by Kazra? He very clearly notices it, but he's not... He's not going to focus all of his attention over there. He'll just patrol yeah. in some units and deal with it. And that's population that's away from the middle of the field, so he's getting the opportunity to get that gold back again. And go for that castle, like you mentioned, killing so many villagers. Look at the population. It's even, Tristan. How on earth has Kozro done this? And King Steven, he hasn't gone for champion yet. He did get Woot Steel. He is getting some armor, but he doesn't have the champion upgrade. It takes a lot of time. Kozro has been chipping away at these castles. King Steven, he needs the two-handed swordsman to arrive now. That gold is the gold that Kozro can take. There's more to be found there. And he's going to find raids with the light cap. If King Steven's distracted, he could lose everything to these cannons. Dave, Kozrao is not dead. And and there's the raid. This could be horrible for the king. I mean, but champion, right? Champion. How do you fight champion? The gate comes out from Kozrao. He's like, oh, God. I can't That's fight you this do unit. Oh, my goodness. How do you fight these? More quick walls behind. He's trying to desperately save the Bombard Cannon. Still getting decent trades overall. But he really needs gold income. He really needs a unit that can stop these champions if, from if taking out the skirms. If he can get, like, 5 to 10 hand cannons mixed in with his skirms, I believe he can stop the champions. King Steven is losing army like crazy. King Steven's still thinking, I can afford to lose the army. I can take these fights. This is fine. I've got a rush in now to keep my opponent off of gold. But, like, the population right now for Kozrael seems decent. Having said that, Dave, there's 40 champions, apparently, on the field for King Steven. If they're yep. all here right now, oh. he loses everything else. Maybe How many kills those bomber cannons have? Maybe. Do it. It, could, it could be. I mean, if he's spamming enough, potentially could be 4,000 gold. Now we look at the, the, the kills on those... Bomber cannons, that's crazy. 4,000 gold collected by the relics already. Yeah. It's been yeah. a huge deal in this game. You need a combo of champion and skirm. You just do. Now, that that's a good move. The castle's now gone for Kazra. Kazra has been distracted. And now King Steven's going to try and drop a castle. So he he seems to be take, taking his foot off the gas for a second, just realizing that 
He has to deny the gold. And if he locks that down, maybe then we see him close this out. But I think pure champion, even though you ignore armor, I, I think it will struggle if there's enough hand cannons for Khazra. But Khazra only has 15. So maybe King Steven still has his moments. And he's just going to dive in. This is like the, the classic King Steven play. You just patrol in with more army. You don't micro it. Make more army. Patrol more army. Don't micro it. And it's working. And eventually, eventually your opponent's going to make a mistake. At least that's what Steven's yep. hoping for. Those yep. castles in the north are absolutely beautiful. Denying res log term. Still has the relics generating all of that income. Still locking down those stables in the north. And... Uh, Khosra is just looking for his opportunity to get another pushback like he did earlier, but eventually he's going to be out of position. Eventually. I, yeah, I mean, in theory, yeah, I, I agree with you, but Khosra will not break, dude. The champions are getting attack grounded. Hand Cannon is way too strong. I, okay, this is what you do, right? If you're King Steven, the Hand Cannons are here, right? You got to get like 30 champs to the main eco of Khosra. And then the this area here needs skirmishers. Skirmishers with a mix of new champions could do it, or your own cannons or something. But like the, I, Khazral's ability to control this army of bombard cannons, which is 53 kills, has been insane. He's out of gold. We He's out of gold. He's out of gold to repair. He loses one. He actually had to sell off food to repair bombard cannons. He loses three of the four, Dave. And there are champions in his eco. Is this the moment for King Steven? I mean, Steven is also losing villagers in his own eco. But, I mean, it, at this point, it doesn't really matter. Does it? I, it he's killed the bomber cannons from Khosra. And we saw how much value Khosra was getting for those. And how valuable he thought they were. Because he was protecting them the whole time. 2-2. Two, two, two wins in a row for King Steven. Let's go. We got ourselves a series. We have an amazing series on our hands. The strategy and the, the preferences and the styles are clashing. They are so different. Clearly, Khazral is, is like better with the unit control. But King Steven, with the 4TC boom, we got to see Dravidian champions with Wood Steel for the first time, in my mind, at a critical moment in competitive Age of Empires 2. And I really felt like when Khazral had that farming eco untouched, when he started to raid, when he saw this castle, and this castle almost went down, or was almost denied, yeah, this was going to be Khosrau's game. But, you know, we, we question it, we meme about it, we question our lord. But if this is doubt, this is why doubt does it, right? The forward castles ended up being the important area of the map. It just took him quite a bit of time to be able to grind Khosrau down. That was, that was a weird series of events. Now that I rewatched that first castle that Steven yeah. place, I think it could have been denied. If the skirms come forward to attack the crossbows right away and the light cav are attacking the villagers, I, I think that could have been denied and then the game completely changes at that point. But maybe I Khosra think it's was one of those... paying attention somewhere else. You ever see, you know those situations where we're casting and we see someone completing a castle or gaining a position, but then we're kind of like, okay, but what does he do with it? Yeah. Did you ever, like, that is kind of what that felt like initially, almost. And I think Khosrael was like, okay, I've killed some villains. I killed a lot of his army. If I can just build up some siege in combination with my army, I'm producing right next to my base. Like, these castles should go yeah. down. But it didn't go down because King Stephen just had so much production there. So I think that was probably part of it. Here we are. It is game five. And we wrong. thought that Khosrael... Yeah, it's all right, Dave. I wasn't going to bring up... Your theory was wrong, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, game five's here to split the difference between the two players. It's Chinese for both, and we don't really need to speculate too much on the sieve differences when they're the same sieves. Uh, Chinese just have such a fast start with more vills, great farm eco, great demos actually, which is also good on this map. But stylistically, we haven't seen a game yet which has been like which has had that potential for full, for uh, a lot of feudal age battle, have we? Yeah. So this no, is the first I, one, I'm, and I'm excited. I mean, remember the last mud flow? Wasn't the last mud flow? No, the mud flow before that that uh, we saw in the main event was the pure naval battle, right? I, I forget what the two civilizations were. It was kind of maybe Slim the Grim against somebody else? King Stephen. Yes. Yeah. 
King, King Steven, that's right. The last one that King Steven played. Um, and it was just full on water battle. It was kind of crazy. We might see that again here. Now, Kozrao didn't play Mudflow in his first round. So I can only assume that Kozrao is maybe thinking uh, what other players have thought and what we saw in the qualifier, where this would be scouts, this would be spearmen, and we would just see the occasional demo. Now, I do think the King Steven against Slim the Grim matchup was a bit different because they weren't Chinese. And Chinese have a lot more reasons to, to play towards the land eco. But that's a very good point. King Steven played this map before. He did lose on it. But when he lost on it, it was when both players made a lot of ships, which is not necessarily guaranteed to be the case here. That's a nice little area that Steven's found on the wood line. He walled in the one villager with the with the lumber camp already, but he's also adding the house, and he's just going to wall himself up very comfortably over there. And we talk about it a lot on this map. Chinese are great here because you start with the extra vills. You have the, mm -hmm. tons of food immediately, so you can keep your TC running, right? So you have an instant eco advantage. But starting with minus uh, food at the beginning or not as much food as other civilizations means that you will have to go out to those exposed areas for food earlier. And yep. there's only two berry patches. You will need to start farming earlier. You will be very, very open to attack on the land from your enemy. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think the thing that we've we've said every time and we should continue to reiterate is it feels great with Chinese. It feels great to have all that food underneath that TC. But the second you run out of resources underneath your TC... You then have a bunch of villagers that need to go somewhere. You can't farm around your TC like other maps. And then you're farming on the hills and on the outer areas where the berries are. So um, I think like you can't be that greedy here. You can't wall much. Your vills are going to be exposed. So the way that you play this is usually through strong army. And I think like it's, it's so funny to me, guys. I just to take a step back. I think it's so funny. All like people... We're screaming Viper at the top of their lungs when the score was 2-0, saying this is going to be 4-0. But now, people are like, there's no way that this could be the Viper now that it's 2-2 or how the last two games have gone. So I don't know what people think, Dave, but I bring this up because the quick walls, if they were going to happen, would yeah. happen on this map from both players because it could get crazy. It could indeed. I love the way that Kozra was locked down that middle area. I'm surprised that the lumber camp is going on that side of the wood line and not in the middle. But he's yeah. got a fantastic little pocket. Like, look at how much he's secured with three houses. That's a lot of safe wood in the center area. And as we know from previous experience with this map, safe wood is the best wood. Yeah, and if you wall a little bit on the amphibious strength, kind of like King Steven's doing... If you wall to the grass, it becomes very awkward for the opponent to ever sneak a demo in, which more and more players have started to realize now. So I do see yeah, King right. Steven building a building awfully close to the shoreline here, and he's going to go for a dock. So again, Kozra didn't get to see what his opponent did in the first round. He comes in here blind, and his scout's over there. King Steven's like, he still hasn't walled that whole area. We might see. It's a galley opening? Yep. He did oh, the same well, thing with uh, Armenians, I think, right? Or no, yeah. he went one yeah. fire, and then he went multiple galleys. Because galleys, if you get a mass, will control this area. However, Kozra's looking for that production building, and he's going to find the dock right here. Ooh, he doesn't Ooh. see it. No, well, he he's missed not... it, dude. Well, he's not expecting it too, right? Back to what we said. He's looking for a barracks. He's like, okay, he's going to go. This is the scout map. Ah, now he sees the dock. And now suddenly he's like, oh, that's different. I think he also saw the galley. But you see how quickly he started to wall this up once he realized mm -hmm. it was going to be water here. And King Steven is going to have to delete his own walls to get the other way, to, to go the other way. But I will say it's great for King Steven that he at least scouted these houses. So he knows that he has to loop this way. Otherwise, it would be a bit of wasted time for him. Yeah, even a horse color coming in now from Kozrao. So Kozrao yep. is getting a little bit greedy with that one. He's going to wall up on this other side. The galleys are good for ranging the wood line. But like I said before, with those houses he built earlier, he kind of locked down a bunch of safe wood away yep. from this galley. 
And he's going to be faster to the land army. So Steven has to make sure he locks down his area at home with Spearman. And he also has to make sure that he doesn't get pushed on the water by this later dock from Khosrow. Yeah, so Khosrow delays the dock, which I think feels very nice considering he hasn't taken uh, any losses. I think if the dock is late and you're, you know, really in trouble, then obviously the dock paid off for the opponent and the lack of one didn't didn't really pay off for you. Uh, we are going to see scouts, remember, from Khosrow, and King Steven's got to prep for that. There's a lot of multitasking involved right now. There are some spears out there for King Steven, though. He just has to make sure he has the spears everywhere, because there's like... We've seen uh, upwards of 10 spearmen on this map and still players are losing villagers to scouts because there's just so many exposed areas. Yeah, great job from Steven though to keep those spearmen around. He's got the fire tracking the scouts and doing a little bit of extra chip damage. And still has the galley forward kind of attacking the walls, but this map gets crazy, right? You have to make sure at all times you have spearmen around all of your villagers. Otherwise, suddenly you look over there and there's four scouts killing Vils, and they're so far away from anything. Yeah, and this is just not a map. If you're going to be a critical viewer, I don't think many people are, but th this is just not the map to, to really question people on too much until you play a couple games of it. Trust me, it's it's fun to watch. It's horrible to play uh, for the majority of players and viewers. And right here, we're seeing Spearmans on the wood line, but there's not a Spearman on the berries, right? The Spearmen are over here to our mm -hmm. left, and this is kind of what we meant so easy for you not to have an area protected when you're looking at the water maybe and not not the initially the best micro there from Khosrow he's gonna find the villager pick doesn't take any damage and a very smooth start from him but he's got to be worried that's a lot of fire galleys coming towards him so that maybe he didn't expect the first one the second one now I don't think he was expecting the continuous water follow-up from his opponent I think it's pretty easy for him to deal with this though if he just goes for like another house or even maybe stone walls behind that yeah he yeah. can force all the fires uh into his walls which should be really really nice for him as the scouts are still roaming around he's still dodging around the spearmen too and decent micro ish on that side <laughs> to take away at those villagers does take a hit from that one spear though yeah he's got to have to place another house here it's getting awkward because of the galley i'm laughing because there was a moment there with Khosrow's scouts where it felt like he recognized, like, I'm a little faster than you. And his scout kind of went back in and backed away, backed in. He was just double checking to see if King Stephen was going to pay attention. I got to say, the water seems to be adding up. We had King Stephen sell all of his stone. And he wants to be in Castellade soon. And Dave, like, this is a lot of pressure. And the villagers are yeah. being ranged on the houses. And the houses are melting. And this is... This is a great position for King Steven right now. I, I mean, you have to keep in mind that there are eight villagers in the queue for cause. Right? Yeah. So he yeah, has true. more food than you think, right? But great pressure from King Steven. Like you said, he's really trying to break that house. Now he realizes with two galleys behind, fire galley there, can't really break this position. Trying to get that second building up so he can go up to the castle age. Not sure if he's even working on a second building right now. He's too busy with the scouts. Yeah, he didn't have the wood. off here for Steven. Didn't have the wood for a second. I think he he forgot he didn't have the wood. And now he needs some help here because there's some skirms. He is going to have the stable. He does kill two scouts there. That's actually really nice. But we'll see, man. I, I'm noticing Khosrow, like, queuing up lots of vills. Yeah, 500 um, food in the, back, in the queue. Yeah, queuing up tons of vills with consistency, which, again, to me... As a player who can sometimes be very nervous in tournaments, I do that a lot when I'm more nervous. At the very least, I think when you are not... Um, it's not a bad thing if you cancel them, right? But it but it is sometimes just a sign that you're not quite uh, able to, to track things as you would Archers. normally in a game. Archers here, but there's no spearmen forward from Khosrow, so the scouts might be able to clear this. Still, yeah. whoa, she moonwalked right into those archers. Interesting. <laughs> Taunting them, even. And she survived. Oh my god, dude, That's she's she flexing it. on them. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say this position's necessarily great for Steven, because he did have to abandon his farms, but if his goal is to win on water have the ships to upgrade he's gonna have a couple scouts three scouts with armor dave will clear this attack 
Back to the farms he goes. Res collected, looking very even. And King Steven, in my opinion, with the better position right now. Steven's made such a recovery in this set. It's looking so, so solid here. And the timings are just coming in for him. Could have even been faster to Castle Age if he had the building. But, I yeah. mean, he's still going to be two and a half, three minutes ahead of his opponent. As we just see the click up now from Cosro. And Cosro is going to have to make sure his walls are up. He's going to have to try and mass a little bit of military. Maybe even keep these archers moving forward so that Steven can't send those scouts over to his main base. He needs time right now. Remember what we said. The strategies that happened in the first round. Not something that players could watch, see, and adapt to. Cosro here was never expecting his opponent to go for this much navy as we see again another villager survive this army is going to get cleared up as long as the weak villager isn't sent out oh, there so weak, there's going to be they're no so losses weak. here oh those bills are so weak it's incredible all right stone wall i believe in the center from cosro i th i think he's trying yeah he's just trying to stop this pressure i mean fire ship war galley really really difficult that wood line we once thought was secure not so secure it's, anymore it's, this is a problem like stone walls go down quickly as well still a minute away from castle age for Cosrow. there could be knights in Cosrow's eco Cosrow's gonna have to hold from this great defense thus far but it, with one mistake Cosrow loses this game right now oh man and knights and scouts coming across demo oh, never in the queue but yeah steven doesn't see that he's not expecting him to be all the way out there i just wonder like what's the wood situation going to look like for Cosrow with the the navy yeah. numbers here from steven it's so so well done to control the wood in the middle and then start picking away at everything behind with the knights okay here come the knights and the scouts now there is a, a sizable archer and spearman army for Cosrow. He does also have the Navy. He has a demo there too. There's a lot happening at Cosrow's base. It is it's too much for us to really be able to look at, but he, he's he trying to the squeeze through, too. but there's a reed there. There's a reed. He's, he's like trying to click through. He's like, why can't I sail over that? <laughs> <laughs> but Dave, the Knights are still there from King Steven. King Steven able to lure some of these crossbows, able to lure some of the units into his Navy. He's got a pretty big Navy. The house is going to go down. The villagers have to leave. And these villagers are going to have to chop wood somewhere other than this amphibious terrain because King Steven mm -hmm. is coming. And sure, there's going to be a demo, but the demo's not enough. And if you don't have that wood, things can get very awkward for you on Mudflow. Yeah, I mean, there is wood on the outside, like you mentioned, but it's long term, not really the ones you want to go for. Not yeah. super valuable. He's forced into it now because of the naval investment. Monks can be good converting the fires. And those archers that were coming forward could also be good. But I think they've been found now on the right side. That army from Cosrow that was pushing forward. And that was like his yeah. kind of counterattack. Yeah, it, they're still going to advance forward. This is King Steven is going for a panic TC because that knight died. And there's the TC. There's also a TC on the wood line. Uh, the thing else I'm noticing about Steven's position not really in a situation where he has a ton of food income to produce out of all three mm -hmm. TCs. So I expect that the TCs are more for protection than anything, but I think he's got to be comfortable with that. Man, Cosro's in a tough spot. Steven did such a good job with that water investment. And he went mm -hmm. water early too. It was more of a reactionary thing from Cosro. Cosro didn't get the value he needed from the scouts. However, we've seen it many times before in this set, right? where Steven takes the early advantage and then Cosro just kind of manages to pull himself back. The last Cosro two does games, an amazing he job. hasn't taken the victory, but maybe yeah. here. Cosro does an amazing job of balancing the eco that he has. Like right now, you would expect he'd be way behind in res collected, but he's, he's not that far behind. And he also gets really good value from his armies. Uh, and I've noticed... You know, that that continues to be the trend here. His crossbow is still looking for value. They will definitely kill that monk. And here come a couple knights from King Steven. But King Steven doesn't have bloodlines. With Khosrow's micro, Khosrow could actually kill all or most of these knights unless the upgrades or numbers improve here. But Dave, um, well, and 
remember how weak those vills were from before too. If he ever gets yep, in there, true. could be a true. problem. That TC for King Steven on the gold though is really nice because he didn't have a lot of other golds around. This is what we mean. Oh, God. Taking this fight right now against Kozra's micro, this could go Kozra's way. I think King Steven showed us in the previous game that he's kind of happy to just patrol units in there. In the end, he's going to clear it up, which is what he wanted. But he did lose two... two knights. Three TC against two, but look at the eco upgrades. Second wood upgrade, farm upgrade was super early for Kozaro yep. before he placed any farms. And he's got wheelbarrow. So when you're looking at res collected, that's why it's actually so similar. And if you think about res invested as well, I think Steven has invested a lot more resources on the, the water element. He's gone for Agreed. the war galley upgrade. I mean, he's gone for a lot of fire ships, a lot of war galleys as well. So you kind of got to balance that when you're just looking at resources collected. I don't know how much value um, those ships are finding him at the moment now that Cosmaro has kind of moved off of the middle. Every single relic has been collected at this point. Like, that's crazy Whoa. to me. And in the Whoa. previous game, Steven got five right away. But the fact that there's no relics remaining at this point is insane. Uh, again, another crossbow army from Cosmaro kind of coming out of the blue. And this is something that needs to be addressed right just now. Sit here King on the Steven. farms. Yeah. I feel like you get enough value just sitting there. You, you don't move those. He's the Lebanon food upgrades. now for Steven. Eco upgrades are looking better right now for Steven than they were moments ago. He kills a monk after losing the knight. Starting to outpost the sides. This game is going late, dude. Mm -hmm. This game mm -hmm. is going very late. And actually, I made a bet with the audience in the qualifiers that if we ever saw heavy demo researched on this map that i would give 50 subs to the stream we never saw it in the entirety of the qualifier if there was a game <laughs> where we would see heavy demo on this map dave as we go late i could actually see this being it so i made a call in a previous hidden cup at the very beginning in a Civ matchup on Arabia. And I asked, is this a wood game? Oh, I was Vikings Mayans. a wood game. Yep. Is this a wood game? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a wood game until the heavy demo tech comes in, dude. Because <laughs> okay. I think the game ends pretty quickly. Like, I mean, it is, it is a wood game in that whoever has access to the wood in the middle has a really good shot. Um, but you I don't think that. this goes down to the final tree, which is what we normally mean when we say, is this a wood game? Castle in the center. Wow. Navy's going to help. Navy is going to help yep. a lot. And Khosra realizes that sneaky, sneaky little docks over on the side. Now, the Chinese naval tech tree, really, really solid. Um, there's nothing special there. Like, the HP on the demos kind of helps, but not really. And I think both players, if they're going into heavy Navy investment, just probably Galleon long term. Or maybe Fires take the initial advantage. Yeah, I mean, Ga yeah, Galleon would make the most sense. I mean, because you can range all the wood easier with Galleon. And then you can also range the areas like to the side of like the grassy terrain to the side of the amphibious terrain. So it would make the most sense, but it also takes the most investment. Like, you need to mass them. It takes longer for there to be payoff, whereas a demo and maybe a uh, couple fires can have more of an effect in these types of situations. But it's going to be a bunch of new for King Steven. Like, I'm, I'm consistently seeing a bunch of texts in from Steven that should have probably been researched a long time ago. Right? Like, yeah. like Fletching was pretty late, considering the Navy that he had. Yep. Uh, wheelbarrow is probably pretty late here. Horse collar was a little too late. The second wood upgrade yep. was a little too late. It's like he's kind of just catching up on all of these things that Cosro invested into really early. And now Cosro has that opportunity to catch up on the um, overall villager count, which he's actually surpassed King Steven in now because Steven was busy getting those technologies. And Cosro is chopping wood on the outside areas, right? He's not taking any of the middle wood and he's kind of been fine. Now, scorpions are tracking him in different areas. I mean, he did lose quite a few crossbows there. That's worth it for Steven. And here, Steven is going to take out this dock and he's kind of stopping Cosrow from being able to push out. But 
We're going to have Fires be the play from Kozrael, and he's going to surprise his opponent with that. And another area of farming eco for King Steven that he has to leave because of the consistent raids here from Kozrael. Yeah, the food has just been constantly under pressure, and Steven hasn't been able to pressure the food eco from Kozra as of yet, but Steven has the Chukanu here. However, the crossbows are in, and the crossbows are taking out all of these Chukanu numbers early, and Steven is just consistently reacting to all of the land aggression, while Kozra mm -hmm. has completely ignored the water area, so he doesn't need to react to anything there. He's just calmly taking the wood on the outside, he will I, come back to that middle area once he's in Imperial Age. You know, the vibe I'm getting here that I didn't think I was going to get this series, I thought I had Kozrael picked out. I could definitely see Kozrael being leery, Dave. Insistence upon crossbow play. Great crossbow control all the time, right? Struggling a little bit in late game, right? In situations where we felt maybe, you know, the cup game, maybe the Byzantines bring it back. I, I'm wavering in my pick of the Viper, as many people might be, or I'm literally just saying this it's... to confuse all of you, so uh, I hope you understand there's a chance of that, but uh, what a game. We're, we're going to Imp. <clears throat> yeah, I don't... I don't know, man. Letting Islands slide on your draft? <laughs> yeah, Islands, Vikings. Picking Bay? Yeah. Picking Cup? Yeah. Oof, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm willing to entertain the thought. I'm just saying, my my hot take with Margugu, there is a non-zero chance that Viper was Gregory the Seventh and got 4 0 in the first round. There's a non-zero chance. Okay. So, heavy demo tech could easily come in at this point with how things are shaping up. We're going to have castles, though, from Kozrael on the right side and he clearly doesn't want to focus on water as much he's making chukunu he's making light cap and then king steven's making chukunu and king steven is making uh war galleys but i really like how kozrao is always finding some type of a threat to kill his opponent but he he must have forgotten that his opponent could run right through the middle into his own eco and that's not going to be fun if king steven can get back into the farming eco it's still an awkward position for Steven to push from. Now, the wood in the center isn't the only resource there. There's also stone yep. in the center, which could really, True. really help. And Cosro yep. has built two castles over on that right side to supplement his push, but he has zero on stone currently because the Navy is controlling everything here from Steven. And we've seen Steven punished for focusing on the Navy alone. He's lost a lot of uh, potential oh. food income at home. From the raids but now he's getting rewarded for it um also a very important resource which steven has just run out of is gold you need gold on the mm -hmm. outer edges and that's where he's headed and those fire ships have found him so there's also gold in the south of his base available but i don't know if he knows that both players are actually taking losses because of the raids right now we also are going to have a treb war like this is absolutely insane what we're witnessing here because both players are seemingly out of position in, in some areas Yep, yeah, one player focusing primarily on the land, the other player focusing primarily on the water. Uh, yeah. And the Chukanu now getting some good damage from Steven, but it looks like these Chukanu in the back are going to get cleared. More farming space available, and Steven was forced to go for the, the other castle defensively in the farm the because Dave, he was being the harassed trebs, there's the so trebs mu are a much problem. and there, there's so much yeah, that's the, a problem the but the trebs problem. right now are a problem the castle is down there's no trebs for king steven kozrael's gonna run right through and so he might not have the stone but like have raids which he tried to undo king steven with in the previous game uh, can undo king steven here if king steven oh, doesn't have the castle is not gonna How are do you supposed anything to defend? dude like that castle that castle will just be trapped down right away even if he does succeed in getting it up i mean it's just faster for Kozrao down. to go into the light cap here as we see the text fly in from king steven he's trying to catch up at all times he's trying to catch up on land he's focused on the water great job Kozrao just ignored all of the stuff in the middle D agreed agreed and and this is not like we're just seeing castles go down we're seeing tcs go down we're seeing crucial economic areas go down. Speaking of, I mean, still no good wood control for Kozrael. 
So he's he's building lumber camps like crazy Ooh, protect, behind this. And he's got to be careful. Tribes. He's distracted. And now the light cap from King Steven are going to hold the area. My goodness, Dave. Also, exciting signs here. We've got a cannon galleon somewhere for King Steven. So he can actually use his water control with cannon yep. galleons to take out these castles if he wants to. I just want to see more water control on the other side of, uh, of that area too, right? Obviously, he's yeah, very yeah. distracted with this. He needs to focus on clearing these trebs up because he might lose that castle he just placed. But yep. at any given point, if Khazra feels that Steven is distracted, he can make more docks on the left side and push back on the water and get that wood access once again. 200 pop for Khazra, who has none of the wood in the middle, but his farms are, he's got 53 of them. He's finding the gold. That has been his focus. He says, forget the stone. Forget the wood. I'm going to have the gold. I'm going to take down your castles with my trebs. You can actually use Lycav, in theory, to go for the cannon galley in there as well. This is wild. I mean, King Steven... He gets it! He can't really, he can't really damage his opponent right now. Oh, God. Oh, and the Lycav are coming in. They finally have the armor upgrade, but more raids in the north. We've still got the push in the south, trying to take out the trebuchet, but the Chukanu holding the line against the light cav. He's not going to be able to do it, and the trebs will push forward once again. And now Heavy Camel is going to be complete, so this gets more and more disastrous. <laughs> King Steven says, hang on a second. You're not the only one that can do it. <laughs> King Steven realizes, he realizes this game is bad for him, and in classic doubt fashion, is going to run YOLO to drop a castle with, like, very little army support. The farm's blocking but honestly, that, I think. Yeah, the farm's blocking he get, it. He can't do it. If he, if, he, if he finds a spot here, it's actually really good. And it makes it really awkward for Khazrael. So you could steal mm -hmm. the farms, too. The castle's going to go up. I just, I'm so worried for King Steven. He doesn't have protection still in his base. And I don't see how he can really push from this with so few resources in the bank for him. Well, the problem for Cosmo is he doesn't have a castle at home. It's almost the territory where you want to sell all of your wood, buy stone, and just like yeah. rip a castle defensively because both of yours are on the right side. So uh -huh. while this yep. castle kind of reeks of a desperation move, it might work long term. However, for it to work, you need to clear up that treb push in the south, yeah. which you've been unable it to do to this point. Yeah, and the, the, just the... the combination of Chukunu and Camel has been so good from Khazrael. I, I cannot stress enough, like, that type of castle can stress a lot of people out, and then they leave their trebs for a second. He's not done so. Oh. And he's taken out Monastery. plenty of stables there. He's gonna steal he's the, relics, the relics, maybe. Because he sees his opponent's relics are there. That'll be great for him. Still 50 on food. Still 50 more pop. But here come the light cav, and, and like we said, there's not... A castle in defense yet. <laughs> he just so... slowly rolls back with two trips. <laughs> <laughs> camels countering ships. They understand the camels. The camels used to be a ship, or the ship used to be classified as camels, rather. Um, but Dave, Kazral, if he can get these trips onto that castle, he might just finish this game. It's really that forward castle yeah. from King Stephen that's keeping him alive insane patience there to not buy a castle himself and to just simply send the trebs back the other way however steven's still Ooh. trying to keep this castle alive these trebs he, he's been unable to kill them as of yet but it looks like he might have an opportunity now but there's two canoe there's camels he might not even get them tristan oh he gets one you gotta yolo everything for the trebs honestly you're gonna lose the two canoe anyways you just gotta hope you kill that last treb the focus firing wasn't the best from king steven he's not gonna get the final treb his castle could still fall. His other castle on the front is also going to fall. He has no oh, gold, no. Dave, to buy more castles he... here. Wow. It look, He shot that down and then packed up the trap. I think it was a misclick, but that would have been super baller if he did that. You know, <laughs> I calculated the HP. I'm going to take one shot, then pack it up and leave. He also takes down the castle that was forward on his base, and he's also gotten the galleon tech. He's getting uh siege ram things are just looking so Crazy. wonderful for cause route and i think this has proven that on this map 
while the water feels really, really nice in terms of having a navy there, land pressure is king. Yep, it is. And also, like, you can apparently get by with the wood on the outside, which was the thing that King Steven didn't think was possible here. Khazral, mm -hmm. he's he spent plenty of wood here, and he's going to find a big clear up here. I mean, pretty soon, there's not going to be a base anymore for King Steven. King Steven's only going to be on the water, which is maybe when we're going to see the galleons pay off for Khazral. But King Steven probably can't believe it, Dave. It was like such a good early castle age position. How did Khazral stay alive? Khazral should not be alive. He should be dead right now. It should be 3-2 yep. King Steven. And these are all the thoughts that King Steven's probably feeling right now. It was just distraction after distraction after distraction. He calls the GG. He never had that moment to really focus on a land military himself because he was always reacting to what Khazra yep. was doing. And the most important part of that was Khazra just saying, okay, fine, you've got the middle, you've got the wood, I'll take this other wood, and then I'll keep harassing your food eco, which is the really, really important element on this map. It's so exposed. He took advantage of it. Khazra played amazing. I've got a I've got a really rare request here. If we can stay in this game, I need to know how many lumber camps Khazra built in that game. It's a weird thing, but we go into the game, zoom out, and double-click on one somehow. Any guesses, people? I'm thinking, like, 50? Like, got to somehow no, click... like, a, maybe 12. A... Oh, okay. Well, that's way less exciting than I thought it would be. <laughs> never mind, never mind. <laughs> he made mind. the TCs thought... on the wood, on the outside, dude. He made the TCs on the wood. Yeah, I thought he was built a lot, but uh, it's only 12. And it's not too bad in the end, I suppose. And there's still plenty of trees remaining on the outside, too. So maybe had the game gone on longer, then we would have seen the wood pay off. I'm thinking Khazra will not use Lithuanians on high tides and instead will look for something like Portuguese. But let's find out. Uh, game number six, people. This is Beautiful Age of Empires 2. Of course, the identities of these players are hidden. We do not know who these players are. But we can only speculate as we do not see the Turks played here for King Steven when he's down a game. He goes for his home map and goes for Armenians, which means we are likely going to see a prepped strategy, a brand new strategy that we have yet to see in Hidden Cup 5, because I mm -hmm. am scratching my head <laughs> right now well, I mean, on what we're going to see. Think about it. You can go to that hunt and you can just shift around with all of the hunt on the sides. Now, the hunt on the sides is not something that we talk about very often here. But it's yeah, available, yeah. Tristan, yeah. and that's a lot of free food. And I could see Steven maybe attempting some sort of early hunt gathering with the mule cart and then shifting into like long swords or something mm -hmm. in the feudal age, right? With some all in pressure from behind. Yeah. It's yeah. closed in the center, but it's very open and exposed if you get through those palisades at the back of your base. If I had to predict something right now from King Stephen, who we believe is Doubt, it would be something mm -hmm. that I know Doubt has tried in the past, where he goes Feudal Age Longswords. Oh, this is Doubt confirmed, yep. by the way. He's the only one who will build his mule cart on a straggler tree instead of just taking it over to the main wood line. That is a Doubt confirmed move if we needed one. But to continue on, the middle's open, right? It's just Palisade walls. So I could definitely see towers and man-at-arms turning into long swords and a full feudal yep and then you support that by sending a mule cart out to the food you don't have to make yep. farms you send a mule cart to the side you take all of the hunt there or as much as you can with like five or six villagers and you just keep spamming this stuff through the center that's just my theory maybe it's too far to walk maybe it's too exposed out there i don't could be a there fortified church also... push too you never know <laughs> Like... No, that's that's a that's a great point. That was going to be my next statement. Is I think that the other thing that Armenians can do really well is with their monks. The thing is, <clears throat> King Stephen has not shown me to be a player who would be great with many many monks in control. That's just that's just the reality of the situation. So, considering King Stephen's history, uh, I would say that this would more likely be some infantry play. And and what's kind of wild is. Everyone and their and their mother, that's right. People have got their moms watching too. Like they expected Turks here from King Stephen because Turks are amazing on bypass. And I'm pretty sure Kazrao expected that as well. So as we are asking these questions, 
Khazrao is also asking these questions, and Khazrao was probably thinking this was going to be a gunpowder war. So, will Khazrao come to the conclusion that he needs stone walls in the middle and thus a fast feudal? Or will he still have faith in like a fast castle and adapt type of scenario? Uh, is is kind of where my brain's at right now, Dave. I think it's just going to be a scout, your opponent, and adapt. Yep. That would be the correct play here against Armenians, especially, you know, if you feel like you're the better player here in terms of execution. Yep. Um, just scout what they're doing. Make sure you're not getting too greedy. And then adapt along the way because Portuguese also have a pretty good eco themselves getting the the food or sorry the wood from the berries that will help you mm -hmm. out early and you can see is already on the berries right now and spending less gold on uh on units is super valuable when you're going for monks or something like that to counter so another detail about how players push in their ostriches that will not use the follow command on the ostrich which means you you say a certain space away from the unit um, he manually clicks it. So you'll see the scout moving around a bunch. He's doing it the old-fashioned way. Um, th th this feels, again, very much like many people's favorite player, Doubt, uh, who, if it is him, is 38 years old, has played this game for 20 years, and is still at the top, which is just amazing. But, you know, King Steven is... He's got to be very careful here with this wall. He's not going Tower Rush, Dave. He's going fast castle, and Khazrao yep. is going fast feudal. I believe that Khazrao, because of the threat of man at arm towers, wants to go fast feudal into walling that front area because he's worried about it, or at and least fast upgrades. feudal to be able to make defensive towers. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's not the worst thing if you're trying to boom up as well, because you can get the the farm upgrade, you can yeah. get the wood yeah. upgrade. And then you have the ability to make towers if I, your opponent decides to pressure you. Plus, you will have the Feudal Age Scout, which is faster yeah. and stronger if he decides to go out to that hunt on the sides. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like a really fast castle for King Stephen. Hmm. All right. Yeah, they, it's funny that King Stephen played this matchup before on the previous map. It definitely seems like a fast castle. We're not seeing a barracks yet. Now, Khazrael is going to be looking for his opponent to hit Feudal. And when his opponent doesn't hit Feudal at around this time, he's going to be like, oh, okay, so it's not Towers. It's not Man at Arms. It's not Long Swords. And like you said, very adaptable build here. And now he's going to go he's forward. He's going to go for the forward wall. Yeah. And he's going to go for the forward wall. This is so good. So many people would just go Fast Castle. But if he can get forward stone walls down, this could actually change King Steven's entire plan. He's going Palisades first. Interesting. He also got the hit on the scout, which is super nice. If Steven wanted to, like, sneak out to the side with villagers and maybe mm -hmm. go for the pressure forward, it, it's going to be an issue, right? Because that scout is gone. I mean, Steven is going to go up to Castle Age at a really respectable time. He does kind of nuke his eco a little bit. And he doesn't have that wood upgrade yet, which is so valuable with Armenians. But Castle Age is flying in here. 24 yeah. population. Oh can boy. you just, like, can you build, instead of pushing the middle, can you just build your TCs on the side right away here? There's yeah. so much food yeah. on the side. With sides. Fortified Church, you don't, do you even need TCs out there? You send Vils out there with a mule cart, Fortified Church? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And then go the go warrior priests and try and control the outsides of the map. I mean, wasn't there this this map was also in a previous hidden cup, right? And people were playing yes. Turks, and instead of pushing through the center, they were booming up and going light cap around the uh -huh. sides. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I will say this: Kazra will know this has something to do with fortified churches. That is a guarantee, because if it's fast castle from King Stephen. That's the only thing that makes any sense. Now, the Fortified Church gives you a relic right away with the Armenians. Uh, and then you can make monks, but also warrior priests. And warrior priests cost gold and food. But it's actually cheaper on gold, which is kind of what you want. And they can fight back and still pick up the relic. So I'm guessing King Steven is going to, like, wait with that scout, get it healed up. Once it's full HP, move out with his scout. And then aim to get a couple relics. And then I guess adapt 
from there. Is that a TC or is that a is that a church? Church. There we go. And then oh. what? Ooh, siege workshop. He's pushing through the center. Okay, warrior priest, monks, siege. All right. I was wondering why he had so much on gold. I mean, he does have the market to balance a little bit, but only kept 100 stone to potentially place a second town center. And there's the second fortified church. It's going to be aggression here. This is why I would have liked a stone wall on the front from Khosrow, because now when the siege starts to batter down your walls, your walls basically don't do anything. Like, I don't even know if it's going to yeah. be worth the time it took you to walk those two vills, build the wall, and go back, not to mention the wood cost. Now what he can't what it does do is it's an alert so it lets him know what's happening and then he can prepare for it and then he can be ready but that is not a long distance to travel right now for king stephen so if he gets you, uh you know a build up here this could be really awkward for kazra do you wait until you have two mangonels uh, apparently not okay that's immediately no as he starts working yeah. away on the palisade wall there He's got the warrior priest potentially running back to go snag the other relics on the sides of the map. And it's an additional scout that's been added from Cosrow. So Cosrow is foreseeing this, knowing yeah, that maybe the yeah. relics might be taken by the warrior priest. And he's going to go for a little bit of map control here. But unfortunately for him, Steven's first scout was healed up. And there is also yep. a warrior priest to help it out. So I don't know if he can deny that relic. Yeah, but this is smart from Kazro because he's like, okay, you're going to push middle, but you're probably going to try and be cheeky and take the relics on the outside. So he's going to try and, and deny that opportunity. But now, I mean, now this push is going to go, it's, it's going to be directed on your stone walls, and you need an answer to this. Usually the answer to this is going to be your own siege, or it's going to be your own monks. Yeah, so this could be a yeah. crazy siege in monk war. And with Portuguese, I think you have the advantage because they your monks cost 80 gold, right? So Yeah, yeah. Well, two relics already collected by King Stephen, because you get the relic for free, plus the relic from the middle. Now, relic number three is coming home. So, like, having three relics to back up your eco when it's this all-in is is pretty interesting. And what else is interesting to me is that Cosrel has his scouts finding these vills. Now, these vills, don't tell me they don't have loom. They don't have they loom. Don't have loom. <laughs> oh, my God, that's horrible! You gotta have loom! Your enemy has scouts out there, King Steven! Steven! Completely shirtless. Oh boy, now the monk won't even get the conversion because uh, uh, Lightcap is in and that's four that villagers so doubt, dead. Dude. That is so doubt. Like the game plan has been great. You push the middle, you expand. But to not have Loom, one of the most basic of upgrades. Man, does that hurt. But hey, still has the relics here, King Steven. Is going to be through here in a moment. Now, this is why I question the... If this is doubt, right? The moment that yep. we may encounter here in a moment is why I question the monks. Because Khosrow is, is, loves to play eco and is happy to play light cap. Let's see how the unit control is here with monks. If this were me, I'd be completely dead. Because past like three monks, I can't really control them well with siege. It definitely mm -hmm. takes a certain type of player... And here we go. King Steven needs this win, obviously. But he's out here in this quarterfinal, and he did see Lightcap there. He sees it, and look at how calm the reaction is from Khosrow, right? He added a couple scouts on the sides. He got Lightcap yep. to snipe the Vils, snipe the Warrior Priest, and he went second TC with additional farms in the, the like, the danger zone. Yeah, in the middle true. of his it base never left. where this push is yep. coming in. And he only went for one monastery and one monk. Like, that's yeah. he doesn't respect this push at all. It's actually kind uh -uh. of crazy. I think if it's game one, he respects it a lot more, Dave. But after what he knows, he might feel like he can kill this and the micro won't be there. And Lycav was a problem on the outside. It's a problem on the inside. And oh, God, this oh, is... Whoa! Oh, what an oh wait a Hang second. Hang on a second. Wait Hang a, on second. a second. What in the world was that, King Steven? That attack round saved him. He would be Ew. completely dead without it. What a big shot. That was sick. Yeah. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, they say. And that's what we saw right there. Now, get out of the way. Cap, <laughs> is a problem. We have a fortified church being built on the front, and King Steven continues to try and push. 
We have atonement for Kazrael so we can convert enemy monks. But Dave, look what's right next to this. Kazrael's gold. If this fortified church goes up, if the siege can could push from this position, this could be really awkward the for fact, Kazrael, like, who has still not left his base yet. Everything about this game just confirms my belief this is Viper. The fact he's under pressure here and he's just building that second stable casually with one villager while farming. <laughs> like, and this is all happening. Like, it's just so Viper, isn't it? Yeah, it's just yeah, disgustingly yeah. Viper. Not leaving his base. Not leaving his base either. Like, there's gold yeah. and stone on the outside. He's still chilling yeah. here. I mean, maybe it's a late reaction, right? Maybe he wasn't thinking about it. There he loses two bills. I'm not ready to give up here on King Steven. I, I think that fortified church is really nice. That it, they do fire that attack arrows. round changed everything. I think yeah, that attack round was like the turning point here and credit to him because that was filthy. It was the best attack round King Steven's done all tournament. Maybe throughout his career as more villagers die. And Dave, how much of this is Khazra not respecting his opponent? And how much of this is actually just because of how messy this, this how much this blurs your mind and your thinking. Yep. And you can't make the correct decisions. Kazra wanted to go well, monk defense and isn't on gold right now. He's going to go for a castle pretty soon. And the only question is, like, where is this castle? As the warrior priests get ejected, the fortified church making things so difficult. But Atonement is in and he gets a couple of them. Attack round fails this time around. And the Mangonels oh, might be dead. That was sick there from Kazra. He, he knew the warrior priests would come out of the monastery. He converted them immediately, and now he's cleared up the push. Still only a six villager lead, right? Still doesn't have any relics. There's still a fortified church he has to deal with. But the follow-up will continue. And I'm just wondering, Dave, I said it before. Castle. If this is a certain player, as we see a castle from Kazrael, I wonder if King Steven's going to be considering a rather risky castle at some stage. It feels like he's planning on a fast imp. He's got yeah. 600 stone, and here they <laughs> no, come. dude, dude, King Steven, <laughs> like, no. There's only one tile here you can move through, right? And he hasn't killed enough walls, I don't think, to well, place a castle on. there. If he walls, he has to wall behind the wall. No, 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 no. The memes are true, guys. We're not making fun of him. This is, it's a reality. He's going to try forward castle there. Dude, I mean, the light cap are not here. doing anything. The light cap are... Where are they? Well, oh, any reasonable man would think his opponent would Does never build a yet? castle there. So he's gone on the outside. I don't know yet? if he has loom. I don't know if he has loom. I also don't know if those light cap are going to get in. No loom! No, no loom! He's on the way to he's doing it! He can't get He loom. doesn't have loom! He can't research loom because he's not going to have a TC where, like, he can't do it out of the TC because he's imping. These better not get in. These better not get in. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hold the line. Dude, I, if this is doubt, that gate's going to open and those light cap are going to oh, run no. in. I mean, he's got a chance as long as the light cap don't get in. Please, please, please build it with more villagers. Please shift Q this villager back. I don't trust it. You can lock a gate before it's completed now, but some players don't do that yet. Oh, it God. Okay, open. that was stressing me out, dude. Now lock it. Oh, my goodness. And keep pushing. And he's converting and he's, everything, he's converting. dude. He's converting. He's converting everything. He's not that far behind. If he gets trebs, he can genuinely win this game. Oh, my goodness. Kozrao is going to be regretting sending those light cap forward and not keeping them at home. If he kept them at home without yep. Loom... All it's those villagers over. would have died before they even tapped that castle. Yeah. But nobody, nobody does what King Steven did right there, except for King Steven. And so I think like the logic of the moment would tell you that the light calf can leave because nobody builds that castle. Yeah. But I mean, it's an epic castle. Uh -oh. Let me tell you. Uh oh, I, I guarantee you he doesn't realize he doesn't have loom yet. He thinks oh, he yeah, yeah. Loom. If he doesn't have it, it'd be hilarious if he had Loom queued behind him. Can we check that before? I would love it so much just to see. Nope, just nope, a Vil. No, no, no. Just no. a Vil. He's not getting Loom until he loses 10 Vils. And, it's and not it happening. might be too late. It might be too late. The Light Cap are breaking their way in. He's got to pay attention to this. Okay, oh, there he goes. Man. I'm so oh, stressed right God. now, dude. This is crazy. I know. He's gonna make Trebs. Oh, Dave. and it's a castle forward oh. for Cosrow. Oh. 
and he's gonna pressure from that side so he's gonna let king steven have this middle area and he's gonna take the back of king steven's base and king steven better push pretty quick because once that castle is up there's not gonna be a whole lot back there to defend this is now okay so in the rare instances this happens on bypass what happens is Kazral, he is a lot of space to move to and if he needs foodico when he loses farms it's there you can just drop yeah. down mills and you can try and adapt without the extra food you're screwed but with that food there you're okay it has to be through this area that Kazra has success because he's going to get his main 31. base trebs. Here we yeah. go. No loom minutes. for King Steven. No loom. And I, can he see that castle? I think he should be able to see it. He should have some vision on it from his base. And we'll find he out here. Either. He does, he okay. It. You got a stone wall. You got to get loom, obviously. There's so many different things you got to do here. But that castle could make it so those like have get in. I can't believe he doesn't have loom, dude. Oh god, this is. At what point does King Steven end up with all his vills funneling through the middle into Kazrael's yeah. starting eco? Well, and I credit to Kazrael because I think Kazrael has left with the majority of their villagers. Yep, yep, from yep, their yep, eco, yep. they're on the way. And Steven's like, oh, I need vills. <laughs> I need eco. <laughs> he needs loom. That's the best way to get loomed villagers is just convert the enemy villagers. Oh my goodness, Castle's he's still holding it out. There's no way, dude. It's only a matter of that. time, right? It's only he a matter of time. That. Loom is still not queued. Oh man, come on, if get you, in. He is gonna make some spears. He can convert organ guns. We have a heresy from Cosro, a thousand gold in the heresy. So any building or unit that gets converted after that tech is He's completed. He's being pulled away with the light cav. Like it's open, brother. There's no loom. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> the villagers are naked. The base is there... naked now. There's nothing there. There's going to be a trap. He's going in, Dave. It's so difficult. We got we got King Steven building a forward TC. Oh, the monks! God! The monks Harris are all going to be killed. Disaster for King Steven. And at the same time, the light cav are going to come in from the backside. At the exact same uh -huh. time, the light cab are in, the light cab are in, the light cab are in, the light cab are coming, the light cab are coming. Doubt's keyboard no might not survive this. Tristan, no loom. No, King oh. Steven. He still has treps. He still has a good position. There is still hope here. But losing those monks is a problem. Now, I'd normally say if you had like a lot of bills on gold, you would just buy, uh, you know, the pikeman upgrade. I don't even know if you can do that. Okay, big question now is, where do you build your next castle if you're King Steven? Do you build it forward and continue to push? Or do you build the defensive one so you can defensive, take out yeah. Kazral? You still and have yeah, imp he's going to build the defensive one. You still have imp advantage. So yeah. that one's yeah. going to go up and Kazral is going to go onto the set. What a game here, man. Sick. But the light cab are coming Sick. in. No loom for the villagers building the castle. If he sees this castle, it is a problem. And I think he's going to notice now that Loom isn't in. Kazra will. I'm not he sure should. that uh, No, he's not. Steven he's will. never going to notice. This has been the most obvious thing ever. You just got to look at your TC for once and you're going to see it. I mean, that's unfair. It's stressful. There's a lot happening. Oh, God. Oh, God. The Light Cab oh, are finding so many kills. Boy. Oh, man. Oh, no. But yeah, uh, people, this might be one of the best bypass games that we've ever had. And we've had some bangers. Uh, right now, King Steven is trebbing the monks from Kazrael. But he's lost oh, over 20 villagers to these raids. Without forging even. And he's just massacring uh, everything. Oh, God. Okay, no, like... Loom. He'll never notice at this point, I assume? Uh, no. It's gone too far. Like, noticing now is accepting that you could have been in a better position, which could affect your mentality. Yeah. It might even be worse for him to notice. There, there's even like, Ooh, there's a situation here. In. Okay, Loom. Oh Loom. my God, he's oh, finally getting no. it. How frustrating is that? Oh my God, there oh. was a situation I was about to bring up where Cosro could actually tell Steven that he doesn't have Loom yeah, before true. he gets it. Yep, yep. Yeah, it was enough instances where he saw the bills going down. And that was like, a lot of this, it's very easy to lack hope if you're Cosro. But if you are killing that amount of monks and seeing your opponent doesn't have loom, you're like, mm. any opportunity and I killing get the trebs. Oh, is going to be no. great for me. He gets a treb. 
The Composite Bowmen are out, though, and the Composite Bowmen will shred through those light cap. The castle gets taken down. Steven is trying to recover. Kazra is taking advantage of a lot of this free food on the sides, and Kazra's eco is still looking way better, and he might be able to go up to Imp without possessing any of his main base. He's only lost four villagers, and his main base yep. is completely gone. Wiped off yep. the face of the earth. That's incredible. Yeah, he just he just relocated. It's beautiful stuff. Here, the Composite Bowmen don't have any upgrades. They shouldn't do all that well. And so basically, with the with pushes like this, guys, what makes the push strong is castles underneath, or trebs underneath castles. And the second you're not next to a castle anymore, your trebs are going to be sniped by units. And Kozrao, who's somehow alive here, is going to click up the Imp with his only TC. And he is in the driver's seat here. King Steven's going to need to balance his eco out. And he's going to need to decide on kind of what unit comp he pushes with being down by 40 villagers. Oh, and Cosmo has enough stone for another castle, too. He might go forward with it once he gets yep. Imp and start pressuring that defensive castle from Steven. Steven is rebooming, though. Or, I mean, a reboom would imply that he had a boom in the first place. But there's a fourth town center there. Fifth, actually. Yep. And it is currently just one for Cosmo, and it's idle. So, uh, Khazra's gonna make another castle. Now, so, now here's, here's the important thing. It's like, just on the strategy, I want people to be able to analyze this properly. The strategy from King Steven, fantastic. But when you're going so heavily into monks, it is, there's only a certain type of player that can handle it really well, right? And to me, it seemed like King Steven's kind of like me. You get past a certain number of monks, and it becomes a struggle to control them. So now he's going to shift away from that into the composite bowman. Which, in all fairness, we don't know a lot about. It is still new. But it's going to need to be really strong to beat the amount of army. It's Kazra not. It doesn't. Right now. I don't think it punches through the armor on the uh, organ guns, right? But how much armor do organ guns actually have? Mm, it's like For six. Pierce armor. Pierce armor or something. It's six or eight. Yeah. It's actually pretty decent. I think because they're so, classified as siege, I don't know if it punches through the armor on them. Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I also wonder if the damage output is good enough with the Composite Bowman. That's always my concern with the unit yeah. like that. There's still a hole there for King Steven. He hasn't been able to push. This has given Khazrael time. And Khazrael's going to have three castles on his opponent's side of the map right now. Can we just can we let that sink in? Three castles, opponent's side of the map, all on the outside. He doesn't have his starting base at all, and it somehow makes sense. Yeah, I give you, what is that organ doing? Man, that thing was dancing. It couldn't decide whether it wanted to shoot or shimmy. Man, jeez, <laughs> I don't, it's kind of weird there. Anyway, I, I, Cosmo just kind of traded his base for the rest of the map to yep. Steven. He's like, this is fine. I'll just leave on time. He's very, very patient with it. And now castle on either side, as you mentioned, chemistry coming in, which means the bomber cannons will come in, organ guns still producing and organs as they've proven are really good against Compass at the moment, apparently. If King Steven wants to go to the outside, the best oh, path God. for him to go to the outside is now through what was Khazra's base before. We got Trebs on crossbows. Yeah. Here we get to see these bowmen. The Vil count Not is looking really nice archers. for King Steven all of a sudden, but Arbalest is just, it just seems like the better unit here. Uh, the Treb is really the main problem here for King Steven, and that's why Khazra gets so close. And Khazra says, thank you very much, time and time again. Remember, the unit that King Steven's making is out of his castle. He might not have his castles much longer if Khazra could continues to build up siege on the other side. Wow. Loom means that he actually saves all the villagers on the woodline this time. Sick. Fog. Is there any comeback mechanic here for Steven? have a good enough army like e the gg is called though and that is the end of what alludes to king steven whose strategy was honestly some of the best strategy we have seen so far in hidden cup 5 unfortunately for him the consistency with execution wasn't necessarily there compared to kazrao and i mean the salutes extend right over to kazrao as well because this guy he like, how did he survive that? How was he so calm? Like, yeah. <laughs> I know that King Stephen didn't have Loom, but the calmness as his entire base was getting pushed was unbelievable. Look at the eco advantage there, too. He escaped with everything.
absolutely yeah. everything went to the sides took full map control and just escaped in an orderly fashion too it was like there was a fire in the middle of his base and everyone just lined up and left one by one as we see Dude, the series like, recap here beautiful series every game, overall every game was so unique like king steven tried something different to start it off tried to go for the relics with the aztecs Kazral played the standard water battle probably couldn't believe his my uh, believe his eyes when he saw his opponent was going for Aztecs in the first place it was Kazrael dominant early Dave we had some big demos to close this out and then it was all Kazrael as we kind of leaned towards game two but there was always a feeling that King Steven's strategy was always pretty solid in my opinion yeah King Steven I mean clearly was trying something different Every single time he tried to match up in terms of execution against Cause Route, it seemed like he lost, right? He was losing yep. the big fights and everything. But Steven is a crafty player. We think it might be doubt if it is someone else, whoever they are, very, very intelligent, focusing on the things that they can do, the things that they can control. This game was, as I say that, this game was not in his control <laughs> from the start. <laughs> you know, nothing really went well here for Steven. And we see a prime example of that with the archers roaming around <clears throat> and the faster castle age time from Cosmo. But overall, if the eco was ahead, if the macro was on point, Steven was winning those games. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And, you know, Cosmo is very adaptive. And eventually, you got the first two wins, of course, being adaptive and eventually dropped a castle here to pretty much uh, cement his position against King Steven to win this game. But uh, King Steven wanted to fight. This is, I, I'm thinking right here, honestly, to everybody, oh God, not a 4-0, because no one wants that. And yeah. I felt like it was inevitable that King Steven would be broken, but he stuck to his guns and he stuck to his strats. And he, so he got this position, which is the same thing he did in the first round. And Kazra was never really able to move out, never really able to breathe mm -hmm. with the pressure of towers coming through to his base. Yeah, really, really sick game here. Even after the pushback from Kazra, like look at all those towers were removed. Yeah. And Kazra felt like he was really gaining some steam here with these bomber cannons, taking out the Trebs, taking out the bomber cannons from King Steven. But what Steven did here so well is he repositioned his push. He figured it wasn't happening from this side. I'm going to go for the towers with Yup Siong and take out the Dramans, and I'm going to make more towers in the north. And those will protect my army, pushing forward towards that gold. Yeah, those towers honestly did so much more damage against those ships than I was ever expecting. This game, I mean, it's kind of funny to see this castle now, um, knowing what happened in the game. But at the time, I was again screaming doubt. You can see the highlight chat. Everyone's screaming doubt, doubt, doubt. Oh no, it's a doubt castle. But once the castle was up, it was a fight, but that position was never lost for King Steven. And it was this position that constricted Kazrael over time, and Kazrael really struggled for gold. Yeah, I mean, he won, it seemed like, every fight at Kazrael for the last 10 minutes of this game. And he still yep. lost the game, because that's, that's <laughs> how Steven does it. That's how Steven does it. We're not confirmed on who he is, but... He's not big on winning individual fights. You got to win the war. Yeah, and it's such good presence of mind. Like, he got all five relics. He controlled the entire belt. And then eventually, I mean, this was an amazing play from Kazro. Just what we said, like, that right there without the gates, that's game ending. But instead, yeah. he kills all these units somehow. The gates keep him protected with some beautiful damage control. And it actually had me thinking that there was a chance. But there wasn't. It was 2-2. Two -two. And that brought us to this one. I mean, I don't know if I could pick my favorite game from this series because they were all so good. This might have been the most competitive. Oh, 100%. This one was back and forth the entire time, right? It felt like Steven really got the advantage. Uh, but then Cosrow just ignoring that middle area, going on to land and Steven trying to recover. Man, I wonder how much like Fletching and Bodkin would have given him here. He was just late yeah. to that. He had the war galleys. He had some galleys earlier that couldn't kill the Vils repairing. I, I just wonder, man, it's relatively cheap upgrades. Maybe you invest a little bit more into war galleys and helps you get in. But at the end of the day, it was cause route just all over the farming eco from Steven. And food is so valuable on this map. You need constant food income, especially with four town centers. No, five at this stage. Yeah, it, it felt like in Castle Age, 
that Steven thought he could boom freely, and maybe that's what he experienced before, but Kazrao just kept finding areas to damage. And this game, I mean, one of many maybe King Steven will look back on wondering if he could have made a slight tweak. Uh, of course, we forgot about this. Like, the no loom and imp was rough. Oh, yeah. But he moves out there with four vills without loom. So this is just a gift of a situation. He's going to lose all of these vills. And then this, like, this is also horrible. This actually should have ended the game. This should have ended the game. This should have been This it. attack round brings him back. King Steven, yeah. King Steven's like, you know what? I need a big moment. And boom, gets the big moment somehow, which kept him alive, Dave. But, um, I mean, again, to, to Kozrao's side, just so calm as he continued to be pressured. Yeah, it's just slowly evacuating villagers <laughs> one by one. And the, the, I, there's... Like, that castle never goes up, right? Except in this specific <laughs> instance. There's no loom. The light cap just randomly left. And it's credit to Steven doing a fantastic job holding those light cap out for as long as he did. But yeah. once heresy comes in, the monks can't get any value with the conversions. And uh, the light cap are just free to roam everywhere. And Cosmo is an insane eco. Insane set. Way better than the first two games would have indicated on there. And... I mean, good luck to cross around the first or the future rounds, but King Steven, what a performance. Yeah, I mean, I think like what you want is you want to show your preparation. You want to show your game plans in Hidden Cup and you want people to be excited to watch you. Let's be honest. I think everyone mm -hmm. wants to be that guy. King Steven was one of the most entertaining every set that we saw from him. Uh, kind of like Otto the Great, who yesterday played in the quarterfinal and, and lost but it was incredibly entertaining. Fell into that category for me. So to whoever you are, King Steven, my salute goes out to you, my friend. Uh, great performance. I could tell that the preparation was very, very... Um, it played a big role in how the games went. But um, yeah, this is now the time where we see who viewers think these players are. Uh, before we do that... Nope, just do it now. It's fine. Uh, nope, no, it's fine, production. It's fine. Uh, folks, w vote for who you think King Steven is. By typing a number in the chat, um, this would also work on YouTube at this point. We got it working on YouTube, so YouTube chat, feel free to vote. Uh, and I have a feeling, Dave, that this is going to be very close because I'm this I'm is very more lopsided uncertain. than MBL. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Where's our Steven picture, by the way? Do we have a picture of doubt we can just throw up there instead of the yeah? The true. Hero icon? We we do have we do we have, must a have that loaded. hero image. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Apparently, King Steven uh, was bugged last time. They did kind of fix it. This, of course, would be the last time we use this because King, King Steven is out. So, uh, unfortunately, it seems like the production forgot Loom and couldn't get the photo here True. on time. True. So, er, okay, there's King <laughs> Steven for you. Who is Doubt? <laughs> who is Doubt? <laughs> Everyone asking who is Doubt. Nobody asking how is Doubt. If we're wrong, guys. If we are wrong, yeah, I know. we as a community are going to lose our minds. Yeah. But I am, he's just so unique. Like, I, I'm fairly certain it has to be him. But, uh, you know, we can, we can laugh and have fun yep. and vote. Apparently, okay, who's second place here? I'm seeing some votes go other directions. Uh, Jordan, maybe? Hera? Viper? Okay, so Doubt is 87%. MBL, 1.88%. Yeah. I honestly don't hate that. I could see MBL yep. being just as chaotic. And apparently Viper would play like that. 1.49% on Viper there. But it seems pretty landslidey, just like before, that King Steven is, according to the community, uh, doubt. Now, before we do the vote for Kozrao, there were some points where I was leaning away from the Viper and the Mudflow game. Mm-hmm. But then when I saw the calm, collective, counterattack style in the final game, I'm, I'm leaning back towards the snake. What are your thoughts? That stable in the final game. One villager building it. He's like, oh, I need a second stable. Everyone throws four on there. He's building with yeah. one, and he's still mining yeah. the gold forward. It's just like, no, dude. It, it, it's, it, it, it's either Hera. Or it's Viper, and I, or and Viper. I didn't yeah. see anything else to indicate Hera, so I'm going to go Viper there. 100%. Yeah, I mean, Vasco, well, Vasco de Gama so. was voted as Hera 
by the community. Mm -hmm. With Vasco da Gama, I was thinking Viper or Hera. I I'm with you. I'm leaning a little bit more towards Viper here because Viper more recently has had those losses in him, some sloppiness in him on occasion. I also think a player like Sato is super underrated. Could maybe be him. A lot of people said that could be Janjishka, but a lot of people were saying Viper could be Janjishka. So maybe I like... I don't think Sato plays that Malians versus Goss game that same way. I think Sato yeah. opens with two Militia as Malians there. What about... And then follows what about archers. What about Yo? Like, Yo has been so hard to find. And like, Kazra has been mm. fairly dominant. He went, He's gone for unique units from time to time. He hasn't like completely dominated everybody. He's also calm under pressure, good on closed maps. Yeah, but he wasn't like raiding enough for Yo. He was sitting yeah. back. Think about yeah. like think about that cup game, right? He's just kind of sitting back, very calm. Then the pressure on that bypass game, very calm, not trying to get those uh, counter raids in super early. We didn't see a single like forward siege position. I Vinchester, Jordan, some Maybe. names I think could be possible actually. Well, let's let's see what the people think. Uh, we'll have the poll up here and see now. In the past, it was like 50% on Viper after the first round. Vote away, people, and who you think uh, these players are. Now, I'm not seeing the results come in right away. I'm hoping we don't have a bug with the poll. But Viper was be... growing a beard until a little while ago. Could <laughs> it be an homage to Kozra? Ah, uh, true. Also, I think Viper on his stream, when he looks, w with the way his face cam is set up, he is looking from the right to the left. Uh, this is bugged, mm. people. This is bugged. We're going to fix this in, in a moment. Just bear with us. But yeah, that's true. Um, I, Let's talk about Kazra as a whole. He obviously moves on to the semi. We're going to have another quarterfinal, which could be even more competitive coming up next. Jan Jishka versus Alexios Komnenos. But, um, Strengths, weaknesses of Kozrael, things you expect as the competition gets higher, coming going towards the semis tomorrow. I think we're going to see a higher level of play from Kozrael, especially if there is no indication immediately of who he's playing against in the next round. Like I think mm -hmm. the first couple games, he could probably pick out that he was playing up against out, and maybe from the the Civ draft as well. Like if yeah. he doesn't know, if it's kind of ambiguous who he's matched up against, I think we're going to see a much higher level from Kozrael come out in terms of the the, the micro, um, less greed maybe, and yeah. uh, more aggression. I could see that. Well, especially because the semis are live tomorrow. They will have gotten to see all these games. So Kozrael is going to be looking to see how Jan Jiska and Alexios Komnenos are drafting, how mm -hmm. they're playing, their strengths and weaknesses. I think in general, everyone should have a better game plan for their opponent come the semis. But yeah, yeah Kozrael, I, I agree with you. I, I was a little surprised. There was points in the game where I felt like Kozrael was just going to win. Like even the cup game, when there was all that pressure, I was just waiting for Kozrael to push it back. Uh, and it didn't happen, but I, I'm unwilling to say that that is Kozrael not being able to close out games because King Steven's pressure and map control was just immense. And really, it just goes back to how good King Steven was today. Yeah, exactly. The decision-making was on point a lot of the time. Just some execution issues that were the problem, or maybe it just couldn't keep up. But, I mean, Cosmo's going to have a, a tough road ahead of him because both um, Jan and Alexios looked really good in their sets. So I agree. He, he's going to have a, a, a tough competition in the next round. And apparently, Cosmo is either Viper Doubt or Mr. Yo. Interesting how we could have a poll that where doubt is at 88% or whatever it was, mm -hmm. and now doubt is also somehow 22% Kozrao. I think some people do not take the democracy that we have here seriously enough and would choose to be funny and put doubt on the ballot. And I don't think that's funny at all. Thank you very much, people. Thanks, Mom. Um <laughs> Uh, Dave, uh, it's going to be full weekend uh, of us casting games. We're going to do both semis tomorrow. We'll have the final, of course, on Sunday. Uh, crazy series, dude. Thanks for showing up again, of course. It was a great cast. Yeah, man, I had a lot of fun. Um, I think the next two players... Now, you didn't ask me, but I'm going to give you my input anyway. I think it's going to be Leary against Sato in the next set. And if it is, remember 
that Sato 3 0'd him in King of the Desert. So think about it. Think about Ooh, it. Ooh, think about it. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll think about it and we'll see you tomorrow and on Sunday and all weekends. It'll be Saturday, Van Sundave. See you next time.